Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is a story about what if Kami sends Naruto to Fairy Tail before I start, please support for more amazing content and do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. And check out the description as well. Let's start the video. Chapter 1. A second chance. It was over, finally this horrible and meaningless bloodshed had come to an end, the end of the fourth great ninja war. Naruto Uzumaki Namikas had done what he had set out to do, and that was bringing Madara Chiha down. The battle had been long and hard, especially since Madara had the aid of the Six Paths of Pain, whose bodies were the former Jinchuriki that the Akatsuki had killed. That was the second time he had faced them, the first time he had been forced to retreat, but due to the fight he awoke the one thing that turned the tide of the war the Rinnegan. When the cages saw him they were shocked to say the least that they took him away to a new secret location, along with some of their top jonin, to help train the Uzumaki. When Naruto's chakra signature disappeared from the land, Madara decided that he wouldn't bother with the other shinobi and instead opted to go and train Sasuke. For two years the fighting ceased, and the shinobi alliance took the time to come up with some new plans on how to stop the Ichihas, the Zetsu army and Kabuto. Then all of the sudden one day they returned and the war began all over again, however this time things were different as they were coming with all they had, the giant Jido Mezo began tearing the land apart, followed by the white Zetsu army, and more undead shinobi brought back to life with the Ido Tensei. However along with them came the Ichihas whom together began to destroy every person that stood before them, that is until Naruto arrived at the battlefield with new level of Jutsus, he alone decimated a large amount of the opposing army, he went as far as damaging the Jido Mezo, forcing Madara to retreat. After he left with the statue, Sasuke started his fight against Naruto, for the few beginning moves he had the advantage, but it all came crashing down when Killer B joined the battle. The three fought hard and long until Sasuke incapacitated B, however the distraction cost him as Naruto came from behind, and using some new kind of fuinjutsu, he ripped Sasuke's soul out of his body, and it was sealed into Naruto. The sealing took a lot out of him, but he could still fight, the same could not be said for Killer B, as Madara appeared using his time-space ninjutsu and took the eight tails away. That was the last time anyone saw him, enraged that he was unable to protect his friend and fellow Jinchuriki, Naruto took both Sasuke's Kusanagi and B's Samahata with him. Leaving the area he headed straight to the Shinobi Alliance headquarters. Upon arriving he saw a familiar face waiting for him at the door, she allowed a small smile to appear on her face, as she rocked a small bundle in her arms back and forth. It wasn't until a week later that Madara appeared in the battlefield, this time though Naruto went after him, the two fought and fought. The land around them changed drastically, in the end Naruto managed to corner him, that is until Madara summoned his paths of pain to the field, that the tide switch, Naruto retreated. The next time those two met was a few days later when Madara brought the Jido Mezo and captured Naruto, the Shinobi Alliance was in a bind now as all the tailed beasts were captured by Madara, they all began to feel hopeless. The Gokages didn't though since they formulated an all-out assault against Madara, together the ninjas fought their way into the enemy's stronghold, what they saw stunned them, their fighting the six paths was none other than Itachi Ichiha. He told them that Naruto was fighting Madara far away from there, they instantly went to find the blonde knucklehead. Now Naruto sat looking at the sky, his body was bruised all over, blood oozed out from the countless cuts in his body. He gazed at the destroyed statue that once held the Baijus in it, now they were a part of him along with Madara, whom he used the same seal that he used on Sasuke, which worked after he used another seal to prevent the Ichiha from using his space-time ninjutsu. As for the Biju, Naruto triggered a seal that he placed over the Kaiubis, that instead of extracting the Yakai from him, it would bring more into him, the eight-tailed beast joined Naruto, making him the new Jinchuriki of the Juubi. And all in all that had taken a lot out of him to the point where he wouldn't heal any longer, thus he was dying, but before he died, he used his last few minutes, he had to write a goodbye letter to all his precious people. Then when he finished, Naruto Uzumaki Namikas, the Jinchuriki of the Juubi, the Nidame Rakuto Senen, the Nidame Gama Senen, died in peace with the only regret of not being there for his wife and daughter. As soon as Naruto left the world, the Gokage arrived along with some other ninja arrived to see the lifeless body of their most hated enemy and their savior. Tsunade was the first to say something, which was naming Naruto Rakidame Hokage, saying that he died as the one thing he dreamed of the most, and the way a true cage dies. It was at this moment that they noticed the single scroll in his hand, with only the name to the addressee, taking the scroll, Tsunade then watched as Naruto's body disintegrated into particles of light, looking down at the scroll she made a sad smile, for it read, Takuritsuchi Namikas and Kashina Yuzumaki Namikas. The only remains of Naruto were his sage cloak and his headband. But Naruto, it was dark, but surprisingly warm and soft, a light then came and pierced the darkness away, and opening his eyes Naruto looked around him. He was lying in the middle of a lush green field, the clear blue sky above him, the field seemed to go on forever. So you're finally are you whelp, said a deep voice. Turning around so fast that it made the Hiroshin no jutsu seem slow, Naruto quickly went into a battle stance. 
Standing behind him was a massive one-eyed black fox with ten tails behind it. Calm down the both of you there won't be any fighting here do you understand, said a soft angelic voice. Both Ajuubi and Naruto saw that the owner of the voice, one panicked slightly, while the other was about to pass out from a massive nosebleed. Floating in the air was the most beautiful woman Naruto had ever seen in his life, light blue hair, bright gold eyes, she wore a white dress that was tied on her chest, making her double D's look even bigger. Who are you? Asked the blonde. I am Kami, young Uzumaki, the woman responded, and to answer your next question, yes you are dead, but you haven't been sent to heaven or hell, yet for one reason, your time is not now. What? Asked Naruto. What I meant to say is that your time to join heaven is not here yet, I have decided to give you a second chance at life in a new world, Kami said. Naruto looked at her as if she'd grown a second head or something, she had just told him that he was being given a second chance at life, he could help raise his little Kashina along his Kuro-chan. Sadly I can't send you back to your world, since that is the place you died in, Kami said to the boy who was getting excited of going home. Why? Things don't work like that, once you died in your world, you may never be returned there, where I plan on sending you, you will be unable to summon you toads or any other summon, Kami said, but before I send you there, there are some people who wish to speak with you. As those words left her, people began to appear in the field, the first two people to come appear were none other than his parents, Minato Namikas and Kashina Yuzumaki. The next couple of people made him smile even more as Hiruzen Sirotobi, Jiraiya, Nagato, Konan, Zabuza, Haku, even Itachi appeared. Then one person appeared one that he didn't know at all, he was dressed like and had the same duck-ass hairstyle as Sasuke, but he looked more like Madara. Who are you? Naruto asked pointing at the Achiha. Letting a small chuckle he spoke, I am Madara's brother, Izuna Achiha, and I must thank you for getting rid of my brother, for he was far too gone to be saved. Now I believe that they all wanted to give you something before you are sent to the new world, spoke Kami as she went to where the Juubi was lying forgotten. Oh look at you Naruto, you've grown up to be so strong and handsome, spoke his red-haired mother first, I'm so happy. Yes, we are quite proud of you my son, however I must say that I am surprised that my granddaughter is the great-granddaughter of Anoki. never saw that coming, Minato said. What can I say, I'm the most unpredictable ninja ever born, though it saddens me that I won't get the chance to see grow, said Naruto sadly. That is sad, it seems that the cycle continued, you never had us growing up, but at least she's got her mother, and everyone will love her, for she is the daughter of the Rakudame Hokage Naruto Uzumaki Namikas, Minato said. Yes, it's true Gaki, Jiraiya said, but I have to complain, couldn't you find one more developed? When those words left his mouth he found himself on the ground with Kishina on top of him beating him with a large frying pan. Naruto-kun, spoke the Sandame, I must say that I am really proud of you. Thanks a lot Jiji that coming from you means a lot to me, Naruto said hugging the old man. Well Brad it seems that we meet once again, Zabuza said as he walked up to him along with Haku. It's been a while no brows, Naruto said to the taller man. Still cocky as ever I see. Naruto-kun, you truly lived up to what I told you that day we met for the first time in the land of waves, said Haku. Sure did ha whatever Naruto was going to say was lost as he took in Haku's form, he could see all her curves in the right places, but he remembered that he was told that she was a he. I knew it you are a girl. Yes, yes I am a girl sorry I had to lie to you, Haku said. Naruto, thank you for everything, Nagato said as he and Conan came closer to him. Yes, you did us a favor in getting rid of Madara, Conan said, thank you. Naruto, it is almost time for you to go, so if you will all give him your gifts, Kami spoke as she approached them along with the Juubi. Minato came forward and pulled out a pair of scrolls, these are from your mother and I, they contained all of our knowledge of you in Jutsu. Take good care of yourself and make sure to find a nice girl to fall in love with and give me more grandkids to spoil one day, Kishina said. We also put some clothes in there. Thank you, Tusan, Kasan, said Naruto, I'll try but I won't guarantee that I will find someone as nice as Kuro-chan. Hiruzen came next with a scroll as big as the forbidden scroll of sealing, this here is all the jutsus that I have learned while I was alive. Arigato, Jiji, Naruto said, hugging the old man again. Zabuza and Haku came after the old man, well brat we have a set of scrolls as well, my contains my sword style, and Haku's has some futin and suetin ninjutsus, as well as hyotin. Thanks no brows, Haku-chan. Well all I can give you is some knowledge of the Rinnegan that I have, Nagato said placing his finger on Naruto's forehead. I want to pass on my paper style ninjutsu as well, Conan said placing a finger on his forehead when Nagato was done. Naruto was about to go and tell Kami that he was ready when a hand stopped him, seeing who it belonged to, he saw Izuna. Naruto, I may not know you as well as the others, but I have something for you too, he said placing a hand on his head, instantly he felt his eyes in pain, everyone watched closely when Naruto opened his eyes, they had turned red with comma like markings around the pupil. He now had the one bloodline that caused all the problems, the Sharingan. I gave the Sharingan so that you can cleanse it name, Izuna said. 
Now then I wanted to give this to you when I was alive, but I guess it's better late than never, Jiraiya said pulling put the large scroll he always carried, in here is my grandest works of my life, use them well. After each person had given him their gift they returned to heaven to rest, now it was just Naruto, Jubi, and Kami left. Naruto I'm going to give you some knowledge of the world in which I will be sending you now, she said, sending the blonde the information required, also I going to give a type of magic to use, it's called requip. Okay, what does it do? Asked Naruto. Let me explain it to him, said a new feminine voice out of nowhere. Naruto felt something dreadful approaching, and he was right from behind him, a black portal of some sort appeared, and out came a woman just as beautiful as Kami. She had long midnight black hair, black eyes, a heart-shaped face, but the most noticeable part was her attire. It consisted of a skin-tight black dress that really hugged her herglas shaped body and a white haori over it. Now he was more than convinced that the women here were trying to kill him from a bloody nose, as he felt a small drip of blood coming out of his nose, he moved quickly and removed it before the women saw him. I am the Shinigami, the new woman said, and you Naruto Uzumaki Namikas are someone whom I must apologize to for making your life a living hell, since I was the one who was called to seal the Kaiubi into. Naruto looked at her and he could see that she actually was sorry. Don't worry about it, sure I might have had a hard life, but it would have been worse if people gave me everything like a certain Acha. That is true, the Shinigami said. Not to be rude or anything, but why are you here for sister, asked Kami. Right well since you're sending Naruto to that place and bestowing requip magic on him then as an apology, I came to give him some gifts, Shinigami said, now then to give you what I brought. Suddenly out the thin air eleven swords appeared floating in the air, Naruto marvels at the beauty that each has. Now as my sister Kami said, you will have the magic known as requip, now this type of magic allows you to equip yourself with all kinds of armor and weapons, by sending them into a type of pocket dimension, the Shinigami said, now I will send you the all the knowledge that I have, and you will use it to send these swords into it. The Shinigami's hand began to glow for a moment before it turned into a ball that went into Naruto via his chest, effectively knocking him down. It took a minute for Naruto to get back up as he processed all the information he had been given by the goddess. When he finished, he raised his hand and for about five minutes nothing happened, time passed until about half an hour passed before the swords vanished from where they were. But you seem to be getting the hang of it now, keep practicing with your magic, Kami said, now I sure my sister would want to tell you what they do, but I think it would be best if you found out yourself just know that each sword is sentient, and that to use them to their full potential, you must earn their respect. Understood, Naruto said. Now just like my sister I will also be giving some knowledge of the world I which you are going, Kami said as she released a ball of light from her hand. I have a question, what's going to happen with the Jubi? Naruto asked. Finally remembered that I was here did you, well we have decided that it would be best if I stayed here with Kami and Yami, the Jubi responded, however you will keep all of my power and abilities, meaning that you will be able to use the power of all the tailed creatures from Shukaku to Kaiubi and mine of course, which is the ability to copy and use any technique, however if you don't have the affinity to use the technique, then you won't be able to use it. Naruto looked astounded, the Jubi was giving full control of its power, and couldn't help but grin at the thought of how he would train from now on. Looking at Naruto Yami and Kami both smirked at what they had planned next for him. Now, I think that it is time for you to go and remember that you must master your magic on your own, with the help of the people from the world, Kami said. Good luck and take care. The light engulfed Naruto as he saw both women grinning like Tsunade when she goes to all you can drink bar, he knew that something bad was going to happen. Naruto blacked out at the same time the light took him completely. Earthland, the day was perfect, the sky was clear, the lake was calm, and the creatures of the forest were quiet, yes it was the perfect day in his mind. Then it hit him, a strange and powerful presence was coming, raising his head he looked up at the darkening sky, a growl escaped his throat as the presence came closer, and its power was getting bigger. Then it shot out of a hole that opened from the middle, it was coming in his direction, not wanting to let it crash, two massive wing unfolded from his back, and he shot up into the air. Using one of its large claws, he caught the falling object, looking down at what he had caught his eyes widened, and his paw was a young human boy no older than six years old, he had blonde hair, three whisker-like marking on each cheek. Naruto had never felt anything like it before, his body was in pain from whatever Kami had done to him. He had lost conscious when the pain got too bad, but now it was all gone, opening his eyes he saw one thing he had never in his wildest dream hoped of seeing. The thing in front of him was easily as tall as the Jubi, but this was no fox, this was a massive dragon. It was black and gold in color, its underbelly was light yellow, it had two horns growing on the side of his head, its red eyes were looking straight at him, then its two wings folded slightly as it took off. Minutes later he was unceremoniously dropped into the cold hard ground looking up he saw the dragon looking at the area they had come from. Who are you? Asked Naruto. The dragon didn't respond at first, so he decided to get his attention a different way, bringing his hands together he made a few hand signs. Brayton. 
Shocking wave, said Naruto releasing a small bolt of lightning, it hit the dragon in the neck. The dragon felt a hit and turned angrily looking at the boy who dare attack him with his own element, but what he saw in the child made him curious. Never in his life had he ever met someone who showed no fear toward one of his kind, and this boy had the balls to go and attack him directly. You dare attack me with my own element boy, you must have a death wish, said the dragon, and I can tell you that no child is strong enough to defeat me. Child. I'm 16 years old you know, said Naruto not liking being called a child. The dragon laugh then responded, really have you looked at yourself lately? Naruto looked around and spotted a small puddle of water, moving fast he went to see his reflection and was shocked at what he saw. He was gazing at himself, as a six-year-old, the blonde did the only thing he could think of, he screamed. The dragon just watched with an amused look on his face. Tell me what your name is. Naruto, Namek is Uzumaki Naruto, and yours. Naruto asked responded. Crossel, my name is Crossel, the dragon responded, now tell me how you got here as I know that you are not from this world. Well I guess I don't see any harm in that, might as well get comfortable as this is going to take a while, the blonde said, it all began on October 10th, the day I was born, after two meetings, seven years later, when Naruto finally woke up from his slumber, he glanced all around him looking for his surrogate father, but for some reason he was nowhere to be seen. Then that's when he knew that the day had finally come, the day that he would leave. For the last seven years he had been trained and raised by Crossel, a black and gold dragon. He sometimes wondered why he wasn't the king of dragons as he was extremely powerful and could rival the current dragon king Bahamut. But the answer he got was too many responsibilities and he rather live his life away from others. As Naruto walked out the cave where he had lived with his father, he began to think on what he was going to do from now on, now that he was alone. For seven long years he had trained in all kinds of thing, he had to get his chakra control back to what it used to be, work on his ninjutsu, fuinjutsu, sinjutsu, and tijutsu, he then added more to his arsenal by learning jinjutsu and medical ninjutsu, hell he went as far as to learn tsunade super strength. Not only that but he had to work on his ex quip magic that was given to him by Kami and Yami, he was proud to say that he had mastered it up to a decent level, and also say he was the owner of some rather powerful weapons and few armors, along with a few other weapons he collected. However the most interesting thing he learned was what his father taught him, lighting dragon slayer magic. The dragon slayer magic is an ancient type of magic that can only be taught by dragons themselves, the power behind each spell was unbelievable, each of the offensive spells had the power of an A rank jutsu or even S rank. After three years of learning to harness the lighting he went as far as to recreate some of the lighting ninjutsu he had seen and use them with magic instead of chakra. Another type of magic that he had learned was one that Crossel himself had found when he was in another dimension. Unfortunately he was unable to return to that land ever again. Yep, those last seven years had been the best for Naruto, but he was now all alone, sure his father told him that he would be leaving, but didn't say to where. So now all he had left to do was gather a few things from the cave and set out to find a new place to call his home. One thing he remembered learning from his father was that mages usually joined something called a magic guild, but he didn't bother to tell him what they were called, so he would go out and learn all about them before deciding what to do, join one or not join one. As he looked through his pack he made sure that everything was in order, he had storage scrolls label with each items it contained. Then when he looked at one that was labeled jewels, he decided to take some out in case he needed the money. However when he unsealed the money he noticed that there was only 2000 jewels, this meant that he would have to do some odd missions to obtain money that are do the unthinkable and publish his godfather's itch of itch of paradise books, or as he called them, smut books. Sighing he took one last look at his home for the last seven years and let out a tear fall down his face. He was six when he arrived at this place, but he was actually over 25 years old as he had been 18 when he died in the elemental nations, Crossel had told him that, that didn't matter anymore as he had been six when he arrived, now he was 13 years old again. The worst thing for him was going through puberty for a second time. But that he began to walk away, heading towards the closest town to get some supplies, also to see if there was a job he could do. It didn't take too long to reach the small village, when he did arrive, a smile formed on his face as he saw people doing their everyday jobs. Walking to the closest store he saw a sign stating for travelers to be careful as there was a gang of bandits in the area and that even the knights were having a hard time taking them down. Shaking his head he walked into the store still thinking on how every world has to have bandits running around free and that no one could eradicate them. Once inside the store he went towards the food aisle, during this the man behind the counter kept a close eye on him as he had had trouble with brat stealing from his store. Watching him, he couldn't help but wonder why one child would need such a large amount of food as the blonde was grabbing food that would feed him and his family for over a month. Finally after 10 minutes Naruto made his way to the counter where the man began to place the items into bags as he typed some number into the cash register. 
In the end the man gave him the amount he owed which was 1500 jewels leaving Naruto with only 500 jewels left. The one thing the owner of the store wondered the most was how the small boy was going to carry all those bags. Naruto on the other hand pulled out a scroll which he unrolled on the ground, then he proceeded to place the bags on top, the shop owner watched in fascination as he had never seen anything like this. All right, Fuin. Said Naruto as he made a ram sign. The bags disappeared in a cloud of smoke. What was that? Asked the man. Oh, this is called Fuin Jutsu, Naruto responded, it allows me to seal things into scrolls such as this one. Wow, that's some useful magic you've got there boy, the man said. Thanks, say can you tell me which town is the closest to get a job? Asked Naruto. I think the closest town where you will be able to get a job will be Shiratsum, which is about a day away from here, all you have to do is take the south gate and go straight, the shop owner said. Thanks, said Naruto as he put the scroll away. He was on the road soon after, walking out the south gate he made his way toward Shiratsum town to find a job. He still couldn't help but feel something weird in the pit of his stomach ever since he saw that warning poster. Putting those thoughts aside he continued walking down the path, hoping find a place to rest for the night, as he knew that he wouldn't make it to the next town before dark unless he ran using his chakra, but he wanted to enjoy the scenery as he had yet to explore this land. It wasn't until an hour later that he heard something, the sound of someone crying, not just any crying either it sounded like a girl. Using his enhanced senses he made his way to locate whoever was crying to see if he could help, then something hit his nose a smell he was all too familiar with. Smoke and alcohol, along with sweat and other repulsive smells, only one thing gave off those sense bandits. Sending chakra to his legs he ran as fast as he could to reach their location, using his skills he reached a part of the forest off the road that was quite secluded. There in the middle of a large group of bandit was a little girl who couldn't be older than five years old at the least. Without hesitation he jumped from where he was to help her out. POV change, why? That was the only thing she could think of, why had her mother abandoned her, why? She had done nothing wrong that she could think of, she had followed her teachings to the best of her skills, was that not enough for her? Now she was lost and alone with nowhere to go, so she took the decision to leave her cavern home and go and search for her. For two days she searched all over the surrounding area but found nothing, she searched further away and still nothing, so she left the area completely. She traveled through the dense forest, crying as she found herself lost in the wilderness, the thus until she came to a road, sniffing she followed the road in hope to reach a town. As she walked on the road she never felt something come from behind her until it was too late and a hand grabbed her as another covered her mouth. Whoever had taken her took her into the forest once again this time to a small clearing where she found herself surrounded by many men. Scared at not knowing what to do she began to cry louder, these men were evil in her mind and now she really didn't know what to do. She could hear them laughing at her as she whimpered. Looks like you finally found something worthy, said one of them to the one who brought her to them. She was walking alone on the road, with no one watching her so it was easy, so what do you say we all have some fun with her, then we can either kill her or sell her in the black market, responded the man who kidnapped her. Although she is young she can be used as a mean for a good release, said another. But then I will have the first go, the one who had brought her here walked closer to her while undoing his belt. The girl didn't know what the man was planning, but it made her more afraid. The man laughed louder as the belt came off, seeing her cower was making this all the much better in his opinion, the girl waited for what was to happen. However the next thing she heard wasn't laughter it was some kind of battle cry. Rasengan. Was the only that was cried out followed by an explosion. The girl could feel the dirt hit her and dust go into her nose and mouth, opening her eyes to see what had happened she saw through her red and puffy eyes a young boy looking at her. He had short spiky blonde hair, six whiskers like markings on his face, bright blue eyes. He wore baggy black cargo pants, brown combat boots, and a sleeveless black zip-up shirt. On his left arm he wore a black and gold gauntlet of some king, as it extended from his wrist up to his shoulder, his hand was covered by the gauntlet's claws. She gulped as he looked menacing with a look on his face, then he turned and faced the remaining bandits. If there is something that I hate the most in this world, it would be rapist, however there is something that I hate even more, and that is people who would abuse a child for their sick and twisted ways, the blonde said, for trying to rape this child, I will kill all of you. But that the blonde shot towards them his clawed hand extended as he pierced a man in his stomach, ripping off a good chunk of his body. Then a circle of some sort appeared in his left hand, and a sword appeared, it was longer than the boy and wide, a hole was located near the tip of the sword, and a semicircle near the hilt. The bandits backed slightly away at the side of the blade, but a sword that big couldn't be swung by a child, so they charged. The boy made a strange signal with his hand. Harigakura no jutsu, he said. Instantly the whole area was covered with a thick blanket of mist, making the charging men stop, a cold wave washed over them as a sinister laugh echoed throughout the area. Heart, lungs, liver, brain, and throat, a voice came from the mist. These are just some of the ways to kill a person in one move.
The bandits were scared now, so scared that some even soiled their pants, and then things took a turn for the worst for them. Screams were heard throughout the mist, one by one they were being taken down by an unknown force, they couldn't hear who was attacking, much less see what was going on. In less than 10 minutes the 50 bandits that had attempted to commit an unforgivable act were all dead. The girl who was at the base of a tree looked terrified at the mist that was covering her view of anything, which is when she heard something approaching her. Looking she saw that it was the same boy from before, he had a warm smile on his face as he kneeled in front of her. Don't be afraid, those evil men are gone now, so there is nothing to be afraid of, he said, my name is Naruto, Namek is Uzumaki Naruto. What's yours? W. Wendy, the girl stuttered. That's a cute name, Naruto told her, so what were you doing out here where it's so dangerous? Looking for my Kasan, responded Wendy, she left me alone and hasn't come back. By now tears were falling down her face. Well what does she look like? Maybe I can help you find her, Naruto asked her. She is very big and beautiful, she has feather on her wings, and she began but stopped when she saw the look on Naruto's face. Your mother is a dragon? He asked her already knowing the answer. Wendy nodded her head. I see so you were also left behind. My father left me too, I woke up and found him gone, so I left the cave where we lived and began looking for him, he told her, nah, why don't you come with me and we can search together? Really? Asked the little girl, Naruto gave her a nod, and for the first time since she searched for her mother she felt happy. Standing up Naruto stretched out his hand helping Wendy up, in his mind he was already coming up with some way to help her forget what happened tonight. As the two walked away the mist began to lift up, and a horrendous scene was left for people to find, bodies laid all over the area, guts and gore adorned the forest. A week later, a week had passed since Naruto had met and taken Wendy with him, and was happy to have someone traveling with him. In his opinion, this last week had been the most troubling, Wendy had, had been having nightmares about her close rape experience, although she didn't know anything about it, she was still scared. Thus she had slept with Naruto every night just to feel safe, the blonde didn't care as he had promised that he would care for her. After that for some reason she called his Tucson, which sort of annoyed the blonde. Naruto glanced over it where at where Wendy was playing with some flowers, at the moment they were resting near the lake, and to Wendy's delight, there was a flower bed nearby. He smiled as he watched her make a flower crown, just by looking at her play, made a sad smile come to his face, as he remembered his own kid that he would never see grow up. At the same time he also thought of Kuritsuchi about how they fell in love during his two-year training. He was about to go and get some lunch ready for them to enjoy by the lake when he felt someone nearby watching them. Wendy Chan, come on over here, we have to get lunch ready, Naruto called the little girl over in a manner as to not let their spy know about him or her. Wendy got up quickly and went over to where surrogate father was waiting for her, as soon as she was close to him he pulled her behind him. Alright, I know you're there, come out or else I will drag you out myself, Naruto called out loud, Wendy just stared at him as he looked at the woods, wondering whom he was talking to. Then not long after her father called out a young boy around the same age as Naruto came out of the woods. He had short spiky blue hair, brown eyes with a strange tattoo under his right eye, he wore a black short sleeve shirt with white and red lines, white pants, and brown boots. On his back he carried a large backpack, a sleeping bag poking out from the top, and a wood staff strapped to the bag. I'm sorry for spying on you, but I was just passing and did not meant any harm to you or the girl, he said, my name is Jell. Naruto looked at the boy who had just introduced himself, still trying to find any malevolent intent, however Wendy came from around him. Hi, she said, my name is Wendy, and this is my Tusan Naruto. Tusan? Jellal asked a little confused at how this boy could be a father already if he seemed to be his age. So I don't ask, she keeps calling me that even though I have told her to call Nai-san or just plain Naruto, the blonde said, so what are you doing all the way out here? Well I'm looking for something, but I kind of got lost on the way, and in the end, I just decided to wing it and travel while I search who knows I may find it by chance, Jell responded. Where are you headed? We're heading towards Anibas, we picked up a job while we were in Shiratsum, no we're heading to meet our client, Naruto responded, as he looked up at the sky, and noticed that he quite some time had passed since Jell had begun talking to him. In the position the sun was in they only had about 4 to 5 hours of light left, not enough time to make it to the next town. Is something the matter to San? asked Wendy. No, it just seems that we will be staying here tonight, as we don't have enough time to make it to the next town, the blonde informed her, I'll get started on out food in a minute. Will you join us Jell-san? The little blue-haired girl asked her fellow blunette. Well he started, but he glanced at Naruto who just gave him a reassure nod, sure, also Naruto-san, I have some fruits and nuts that I can share, and also would it be okay if I traveled with you to Anibas? Sure, you can come with us, Naruto told him as he reached into his ninja pouch. I have an extra tent in case you need one, the blue-haired boy said trying to help out. 
that won't be necessary as I can build ourselves a house, said Naruto as he kneeled down and placed the scroll he took out on the ground before starting to make some strange hand signs. Build a house. How? Jell wondered. Jell's answer came when Naruto slammed his palms on the ground, Mokuten. Shichuakan no Jutsu. The boy's eyes went wide open as a massive two-story house rose from the ground, it was an old Japanese-style home. He looked over at Wendy who was looking at the house like it was nothing new, of course he should have known that since she was with a blonde that she was bound to know that he could make a house appeared. Naturally he was also fascinated as he had never heard of someone using magic to make houses and wondered what type he uses. What kind of magic is that? Jellal asked. No magic, this something called ninjutsu, and no I won't say anything more than that, Naruto said. I guess everyone has their secrets that they don't want anyone else to know, Jellal said shrugging his shoulders. With that, Naruto unrolled the scroll he had taken out earlier and made a hand sign calling out release, in a cloud of smoke a table appeared. Soon the two teams began to work on their dinner, while Wendy just sat inside on the side and waited for the food to be finished. As soon as they finished making the food, Wendy began to set the table using the utensils that were inside the house. The group ate in total quietness, when the food was gone, Naruto made a cage bushin to wash the dishes, this once again shocked Jell, as he saw Naruto throw a new technique every so often. By the time the area had been cleaned up the sun was going down and the group decided to turn in early as they planned to get up early the next day to continue on their way. And, well this is not my best chapter 1 my opinion, but it's the best I could do after being gone for so long. Well on to announce why I've been absent, you see the fall semester is coming to an end and well my courses just became even tougher as I am studying 3D modeling which has me doing tons of projects that require much of my time and I don't have time to write as much anymore. Not only that but I have a second shift job as well, so updates will be rather slow for the next couple of weeks, so I beg you be patient, I will try to update another of my stories next week. The next chapter will be longer. Now a couple of other things, I will not be following the same path of the canon, as you just read I had Wendy be found by Naruto instead of Jell, but I still added him at the end. Also I'm sorry if you don't like the way I had Naruto meet Wendy as I tried my best to write a dark scene and I know I went a little overboard with the bandits. Naruto and Wendy will not be joining a guild for a while, and no, they won't be joining Kate Shelter either, but they will join Fairy Tail just not for a while. They will be traveling all over Earthland doing jobs, Wendy will get stronger, and they will find Cheryl's egg. So please review on this chapter. On another not Naruto will be battling dark guilds. Okay enough of that I want to ask all of you a simple question. Prior to joining Fairy Tail Naruto is going to fight other mages, as a way to make a name for himself, he will fight Angel from Oration Says. Now who do you want to see him fight from other guilds the top three will be selected, the choices are Urza, Marahin, Markrov, Ichiya, Jura, or Lion. Or if you want someone else just PM me or leave a review. On to what many are waiting for the harem, well at the moment it looks like this, Urza, Marahin, Hana, Angel, I'm only hiving seven or less depends on how I feel of writing it. I will have a two year time skip for the next chapter so you know, I will have a flashback of what happened the night Jella left. Well that's all I think but one last thing, and that's the stats of Naruto and Wendy, Naruto Uzumaki, skills, shinobi techniques, Harigakur no jutsu hit and miss jutsu, Mokuten, Shichuakan no jutsu wood release, four pillar house jutsu, exquip magic, weapons kubikiri no hacho, armor, dragon slayer magic yet to be revealed, another magic guess will be revealed next chapter. Yes I know that he sounds overpowered and he is slightly however he still will have a hard time fighting S class mages. Wendy Marvel, Skills, Dragon Slayer Magic Sky Dragon, Fairy Fox of Fairy Tail, Disclaimer. I do not own either Naruto or Fairy Tail, if I did then Sasuke would have died at the Valley of the End. Well not much to say expect that the poll is closed and the winners are Markrov, Urza, and Oze Porla. So this is how's it going to happen, Markrov will face Naruto before the blonde joins Fairy Tail, Urza will fight Naruto after he has joined the guild. And the thing with Oze well I was planning on having Naruto fight Gajil at first, but instead I will have Naruto fight Oze and Wendy, and Natsu will face Gajil. I know this is a little spoiler, but hopefully you won't be disappointed, I was asked to have Naruto vs Gildertz, but I'm not sure if I should, so I will ask all of my readers for their opinion, should I make the fight? Leave a review or PM me. The harem so far is Naruto x Urza x Marahin x Kana x Angel x x maybe, and no I will not add Wendy to the harem she and Naruto will have a father-daughter relationship. I will also be writing two more Naruto x Fairy Tail crossovers, so I might pair Wendy with Naruto in one of those. Chapter 3 time goes by. Six-year-old Wendy Marvel Uzumaki was skipping down the road with a large smile on her face, behind her was her surrogate father Naruto Uzumaki. The two of them were heading toward the merchant town called Akalifa to do a trade of an item that Naruto had found in a cave during their last mission. 
and truth they had found more than one thing, sealed inside of a scroll was an old book about ancient magic that he decided to keep for further study. The blonde had a small smile on his face as he saw Winnie smiling, she was finally smiling again after Jell left them to go on his own, and that really depressed her. The blue-haired boy had only traveled with them for about six months before he left the party. However the boy didn't leave without being caught as he tried to sneak off during the middle of the night, but Naruto saw him leaving. After a small talk with Jell, he now knew why he was leaving them, apparently he found what he was looking for and he was about to go and see if it was. Naruto of course didn't allow him to go without Naruto giving him one of his special tri-pronged kunais that he had. The boy was skeptic about how the kunais worked that is until Naruto performed the technique in front of him. The blonde then explained how it was his father who invented the jutsu, the name of the jutsu, the Hiroshin no jutsu. Jell took the kunai in the end and left telling Naruto that he should join a guild soon as his reputation was growing and many guilds would come after him. The ninja only chuckled at his comment and said that he could handle anyone who came after him or his daughter. It wasn't until morning that when he found out that her friend Jell left, Naruto did his best to cheer her up by telling her that they would see him again. The female dragon slayer wasn't happy and for about a month she didn't smile or anything, but she came around and began to smile again. Naruto let out a sigh as he watched his bundle of joy run up to him and grabbed his hand pulling him, his eyes landed ahead of them and saw that they had arrived at Akalifa. The two walked up to the gate to the town that was being guarded by two knights, whom gave the duo a nod. The first thing that Naruto noticed about the town was that it was bustling with merchants selling and buying many goods, from clothes to jewelry. However Wendy was dragging to the one place that he would have looked for as soon as he arrived in town, the restaurant. He laughed slightly at the actions of his daughter, the girl on the other hand was so excited to eat that she let go of her father's hand and ran ahead to get her food. Naruto watched her go, sighing out loud he ran up to catch up with her, he needed to keep her out of trouble. After they were done eating the two went and sold the piece of jewelry that the blonde had found in that cave from his last mission. He received a decent price for it, in the amount of 700 jewels. Now the two were heading to the local job request tavern to see if there were any good missions available. By the time they arrived at the tavern he noticed that there are a lot of people around a board in the lower left corner of the establishment. Curious as to what was going on him along with Wendy went over to see what all the fuss was about, what he saw wasn't what he was expecting. On the small board was an article on the destruction of a tower by the mages from a magic guild called Fairy Tale. a small smile came his face as he thought of all the things he heard from the guild. If there was a guild that he would join one day it would be that one, but at the moment he wasn't really that interested. Not really wanting to know more about the tower he moved away toward the request board, Wendy on the other hand looked more at the article before joining her father. Naruto meanwhile was looking at the board scene which would be the most difficult, as he needed more training to get back up to the level he used to be at. Seeing a perfect one about a demon up north terrorizing the nearby towns, he went to reach for it, but as soon as he grabbed it another hand was on it. Following the hand he saw a white-haired girl with blue eyes she seemed to be around his age, his eyes then traveled lower, and a blush appeared on his face at seeing her attire. She wore a black midra sleeveless shirt, although she had a flat chest, and short, really short black shorts, the girl on the other hand looked back at him with a raised eyebrow. She wondered why he was looking at her the way he was, then it hit her he was checking her out, a small blush rose to her face, and soon she began to scowl. Sorry, he said, I didn't think that anyone else would be taking this mission. That took her by surprise as his hand let go of the request paper, and he grabbed another that was next to it. She watched him go, but then stopped right outside the door, and then she felt someone push her away a little. A small blue-haired girl ran from behind her up the boy and jumped onto his back before he vanished in a swirl of water. What the hell just happened? She asked herself slightly confused. Mirani, what's wrong? Asked a young girl's voice. Nothing, let's go Asana, the girl Mira said. Meanwhile Naruto and Wendy were happily walking on the road, well more like Naruto was walking since he was carrying Wendy on his shoulders. At the moment he was thinking about that girl that he saw and the weird aura she was eluding, it was as if she was barely able to control her magic. Sighing he pulled out the poster he took and saw that it was a mission that was being requested by a man in Shiratsum town. But what really bothered him was the place where he was to meet the client and the fact that it didn't really have much info on the type of mission that it was. Hours later the two finally reached the town, and Naruto made a shadow clone whom he handed Wendy over to, while he went to find the client. Walking into the local pub he went and sat in the corner and waited for the man to arrive as it was instructed. He didn't wait long as a man sat down next to him, he had his face covered with a worn-out traveling cloak. I take it you're the one who came to take my request? The man asked. Yeah, responded the blonde. Thank you, I appreciate the help, though I have to wonder how many people you brought? He asked. It's just me, said Naruto, I'm a one-man army. The man looked shocked at what this boy had said, he was the only one whom had come, this was not going to end well for the town, but at least it might help out a little. So what is this mission about? 
the Jinchuriki asked. Before that I think it would be best if I tell you who I am, I am the mayor of this town, and I want you to eliminate the guild known as Ghoul Spirit, the now revealed mayor said. The elimination of guild should be left up to those rune knights I've heard so much about, said Naruto. Normally yes, but they have ignored my pleas of help, so now I have to resort to this kind of thing, said the mayor. Very well then, I will go and disband this dark guild that you're having trouble with then, Naruto said as he got up. Naruto walked out of the bar and walked in the direction that the mayor had pointed him in, he hoped that this wouldn't take so long. He made it to the outskirts of the town in 10 minutes, he then proceeded to head to where the guild was, just as he knew that he was approaching it he stopped. Not a second passed before a group of mages surrounded him, judging from the symbol on them he knew that they were from Ghoul Spirit. So this is that foolish mage that, that bastard mayor hired to take out our guild, such a mistake, spoke one of those mages around the blonde. Let's just kill this fool and send his body to the mayor, another said this time a woman. The other ghoul spirit mages chuckled at the comment. Then against one. The blonde said, man this is so not worth my time. What's that supposed to mean you blonde bastard, a redhead said. Just what it means, ten of you aren't enough to defeat me, Naruto said vanishing in a burst of speed, only to reappear twenty feet away, the ten mages fell to the ground without knowing what happened. Smiling the blonde kept on walking, he knew that he was being watched, taking another step he triggered a trap that had been laid. From the trap a giant cage came crashing down on top of him trapping him in place, three mages came out from hiding smiles on their faces. Well not a very good mage are you now, asked the tall one. Naruto smiled at them before he went up in a cloud of smoke shocking them, a shadow dropped down from above on top of the one who made the remark knocking him out. The other two began to run away, but before they got even five feet, two silver needles embedded into their necks, sending them to the ground as well. Naruto turned and continued his journey to find the main base of these so-called mages. It only took him five minutes to arrive at the place, and what he found wasn't to his liking, the building was just two stories high, with lots of windows in the front, it seemed to stretch about forty feet in length. Man I at least hope that there is a competent mage in there, Naruto said as he walked up to the door, sighing he kicked it open, sending it off the hinges. The inside was a shock to the blonde, it was dark and empty, glancing around and seeing nothing he kept on moving forward. As soon as he got to the center the lights came on revealing over a fifty mages in the room, all of the grinning at the blonde. All at once they began to attack him with all kinds of different magic spells, they got closer, and the only thing the blonde did was yawn. Just when the spells were about to hit him, a smirk appeared on Naruto's face. Rotation. He called out as he began to spin and a blue dome of energy surrounded him spinning as well. All the attackers were taken aback by the display of magic, then the dome grew bigger and bigger, destroying everything in its path, soon it was big enough that it took with it a large amount of the room, along with the ghoul spirit mage and part of their guild. Naruto looked around and saw that the mages were either dead or heavily injured, that they wouldn't move for a while or ever. Smiling in satisfaction with his work the blonde disappeared in a yellow flash, however he didn't notice that he had witnesses for his job, as four people emerged from the shadows. What interesting magic, one of them, a male, said, I'm sure master will want to know about that boy. Yes, he would, he will also send us after him later on to recruit him, a woman this time said, he is rather cute too. Ikaruga, you sound like a cradle robber with what you just said, a third member a male said with a laugh. Shut up Vidaldus, now come on we have to report this master that the guild he wanted to have join us is gone, the woman known as Ikaruga said, and also of our findings. Three of them left, and the fourth member stayed behind for a minute looking at the destroyed guild before following his comrades. That boy could either be a powerful ally or a deadly enemy were the thoughts of the fourth member. Naruto on the other hand had just arrived at the town and was getting ready to go find Wendy to go collect his reward when he felt a strange presence. Looking at the sky he could swear that he felt the same kind of energy around six months ago on the night that Jello left to go after the source, if he remembered correctly he called it anima. Then as it came it was gone, shrugging he continued walking to get his daughter, although he was still thinking about those four presences he felt close to the ghoul spirit guild, they did nothing but observe. Since that was the only thing that they were doing observing he paid no attention to them, but now that he thought about it, maybe they were scouting him out, it would seem that the time to join a guild was drawing faster, faster than he wanted. Making a shadow clone he ordered it to go find the mayor and get the reward while he went to get Wendy. Meanwhile Wendy along with shadow clone Naruto was sitting on the river bank that was located in the forest around the town. The two had decided to take a small hike through the area while the original Naruto went and dealt with the client for whatever he wanted. After a while Wendy got tired and the two decided to take a small break before heading back to town to wait for the real Naruto to return. The clone was just about to say something to the young dragon slayer girl when she suddenly stood up and began to walk toward a pair of trees. Clone Naruto followed her to see where she was heading, she walked past the first few trees and kept going in deeper into the woods. The two dragon slayers walked for five more minutes before coming to a stop in front of hollowed out tree. 
Wendy went inside immediately, while the shadow clone just watched for a moment, then the girl came back out, but in her hands, she held the biggest egg that he had ever seen. What the hell? The clone said, I'd hate to see the chicken that laid that egg. It's a dragon's egg, Wendy said with a smile. The original has to see this, the clone said as he pulled out a tri-pronged kunai and throwing it to the ground. In a yellow flash the real Naruto appeared, the clone quickly dismissed itself letting Naruto know what was going on at the moment. He walked over to Wendy and kneeled down to look more closely at the egg. True it was the biggest egg he had ever seen, it was weird too, it was white with pink stripes, in his opinion this was not a dragon egg, and if it was then it sure was a weird one. Who sent can we keep it? Asked Wendy giving the blonde the devastating puppy eye jutsu. The blonde sweat dropped at the side of her face, sure he could say no, but that would hurt the girl, sighing he gave her a nod. Wendy gave him a dazzling smile as she began to rub the egg happily, Naruto couldn't help but feel curious as to what would hatch. Let's go Wendy-chan, said Naruto walking away knowing that his clone would catch up to them. The brunette walked behind her father a smile still on her face. Two one half years later, I'm sure flew by, it had already been three years since Naruto had officially adopted Wendy as his daughter. He was now 15 years old, and Wendy was 8, Naruto in the time changed his clothing slightly, he now sports black boots, black jeans with a brown belt, and his ninja pouches attached to his hip, a grey skin tight t-shirt, a black leather jacket with white fur trim around the neck. The necklace that Tsunade had given him around his neck, also on his hip, was the second Hokage's sword, the Raijin, his blonde hair had grown longer, and he could now tie a small ponytail, and on his shoulder rested his old leaf headband. Wendy who was walking next to him wore a pair of black sandals, grey pants, a white short sleeve shirt, a black and white jacket with an orange whirlpool on the back, the same one that was on her father's jacket. On the girl's hip was a pouch just like Naruto's, where she carried her items but, that wasn't the only on her hip there was a pair of pouches, where she carried the weapons that she had been given for her last birthday, a pair trench knives. During those two years they hadn't traveled alone anymore, a few days after Wendy found the so-called dragon egg, said egg hatched. The duo had been stunned with what had hatched, it was no reptile that came out, and instead it was a white cat. Wendy had been fascinated by the feline and instantly took a liking to her, she named the cat Cheryl, later on the two nearly died of a heart of attack when she spoke. Ever since then the cat became part of their family, and would usually be found resting on Wendy's arm or on Naruto's head. Now the two were just walking around the land helping out where there was trouble and getting paid for helping. Also during the years Naruto's reputation grew and soon many guilds sought him out, from both regular guilds to dark guilds. Well not all of them sought him, one guild never bothered him, and that was fairy tale, he sometimes wondered why, but after a while he let go of those thoughts, as he knew they would come sooner or later. Hell he had even been asked to join the Rune Knights as a captain, he said no. Naruto reached into his pouch and pulled out something that he had recently obtained during a quest to take out a group of rogue mages. It wasn't from the mages he had obtained it from, he took it from a female mage who had also been on a similar quest, and apparently the client wasn't aware of the other mage. Well the other mage was a female from a guild no blue pegasus. When he arrived at the hideout he saw the women tied to a chair as the group of male mages surrounded a pink-haired girl, when he glanced a little closer he noticed that she was different. Her energy was not the same as others, she also had small horns on her head. Not liking the way the men were looking at her he jumped in and started to attack the mages, effectively knocking them all out, afterwards he looked at the tied-up woman. As he was about to release the woman one of the mages woke up and told Naruto what the woman had done, saving her skin by sacrificing her stellar spirit. Naruto had been so enraged that he forced the woman to cancel her contract with the spirit or she would die, she tried to argue, but in the end she did as she was told. After picking up the seven mages and taking the key from the woman he left her in the hut where he had arrived alone with a single pill that would restore her magic. Ever since that day he kept the key with him at all times, hoping to find a mage who would be perfect, but so far he found out that stellar spirit mages were hard to come by. So in the end he ended up researching everything he could about spirits and the contracts that they make with the summoner, and made the contract himself. Now he knew a new kind of magic one that he didn't use very often. Seeing ahead Wendy saw that they had finally arrived at the resort town that her father had told her he would bring her once she mastered the trench knives. Glancing up she saw the blonde looking at the golden key that he took from that woman he had told her about. Oh two san were here, Wendy said, but he didn't acknowledge her, smirking she whispered something into the Nico's ear. The cat then smirked evilly and a pair of wings appeared on her back, Wendy reached into her pouch and pulled out two balloons and handed them to Cheryl. Cheryl flew up above the blonde, she was about to let go of the balloons, but she descended and landed on the blonde's hair, sinking her claws into the balloons, popping them. Water drenched the blonde snapping him out of his thoughts. Ah, what the hell Cheryl, the blonde yelled as the cat took off, and then he heard a giggle. Looking at Wendy he saw that she was laughing, and was thinking how in the hell did she prank him, him when he was the king of pranks. Man Wendy-chan did you have to have Cheryl wet me? 
well you were in deep thought and that was the only way to get your attention when he responded, not to mention we are here. Indeed we are, Naruto said, well we might as well go find an inn to stay the night and tomorrow you can have all the fun you want. Yay. Screamed the little girl as she ran ahead with Gerald following close behind. A smiling Naruto not far behind he had a gut feeling that something was about to happen soon and that he was going to have to protect his family with all he had. But for now he would enjoy himself here at the Akane Resort. Well not too much action here either, this is my longest chapter yet so tell me what you think, I feel like I'm rushing a bit too much though. Anyways Wendy in this story will lock, she will keep some of her personality, but she will be stronger. Also in three chapters I begin the fairy tale canon, yep next chapter is the first fight you all want Naruto vs Markarov. So please review and please no flames. Next chapter, chapter 4 Fated Encounters. Well I did some rethinking on this story and came up that I didn't like where it was going, so I took the liberty to rewrite this chapter. I am taking out all the bleach elements out. I will be thinking on writing an Ajima Naruto fairy tale try crossover not sure yet, but I will try updating my stories monthly from now on, unless I have some project for my English class. Naruto 17. Wendy, 10. Not much had changed in this last two years for Naruto, Wendy and Cheryl, aside from the fact that Wendy now joined Naruto on his missions, instead of sitting on the sidelines. Naruto had also developed his magic even more to the point that he could probably give one of the ten wizard saints a run for their money. Wendy had grown the most in Naruto's eyes as she managed to do the impossible six months ago that was unlock her chakra reserves, which Naruto thought would be impossible for mages, and now she had at least low chunin reserves. After she managed to do that Naruto used the chakra paper that his sensei Kakashi had given him to check her affinity, it was no surprise when he saw that it was wind. So he began to teach her the basics, which were hard for her as she kept pulling magic energy, instead of the chakra. However, now she was at least a high gen and level low chunin. The blonde in this time had also created a few more variations to his father's jutsu, the Rasengan, he evolved it so far that it reached the point where he could literally throw it at his opponent without adding an element affinity. For two years the duo and a cat would go anywhere to get a job, they even went back to the same towns that they had done jobs for before. At the moment Naruto and Wendy were sitting at a cafe in Harjant Town, both enjoying a well-deserved break after their last mission. Having to clear out a mountain full of Vulcans really tired them out, together they took out at least 60 of them, but some got away. Ano Otu san where are we going next? Asked Wendy. We're heading to Shiratsum town, I heard of a job that has caused the lives of quite a few mages, Naruto responded as he took a sip of his tea. It's that difficult. The girl said. What could be so tough that mages have died? Cheryl asked as she placed down a cup. Not sure, but whatever it is I'll make sure to end it, Naruto said, we leave in two hours, so go and do what you like until then, then meet me at the train station. But that Naruto stood and left in a swirl of wind, leaving his daughter and cat to do what they wanted until it was time to go. He on the other hand headed to the closest magic store that he could find, to his bad luck, there was only one in the whole town. Shaking his head he went in to see if he could find anything worth buying. Upon entering he could see many things, there were pots, books, charms, there were even some sword hung up on the wall along with some shields. Behind the counter was an old man who was looking at him with a smile. Yo, old man do you have any magic swords aside from those on the wall? Asked the blonde. I do have one other aside from those, the old man responded as he went into the back of the store. A minute later he returned pulling what seemed to be a small wagon, what was on the wagon intrigued him even more. The blade was at least the same size as his kibakirabacho, but the blade was black and silver, and instead of it being like any regular katana or any other sword, this one was square with a sharp edge. The hilt was grey and at least a foot long wrapped in silver bands, the guard was the same shape as the blade, square. That is one strange sword, Naruto said as he approached the wagon. This sword came in a week ago and I haven't been able to sell it, all those who have tried to lift it say that it's way too heavy, the shop owner said, I sent a message to other towns promoting the sword to see if anyone would come and try it. Well I might as well try it, the blonde said as he grasped the hilt of the sword. With a grunt Naruto lifted the sword from the wagon, just like the old man had said the sword was indeed heavy, at least three times his kubakirabacho. I'll take it. Excellent, the shop owner said happily as he went to the counter, I will even cut you a deal and sell it to you for 300,000 jewels. Naruto pulled out his old frog wallet he had called Gamachan and pulled out a few bills which he passed to the man. Nodding at him, the blonde made the sword disappear in a flash of light, he then made his way out of the store and left to go find a clothing store. The blonde walked through the streets looking right and left until he spotted a decent looking clothing store. Naruto pushed open the door making a small bell ring, the inside wasn't too big however, and it did have quite a nice selection of clothes. Looking around the aisle he searched for something nice, the reason. Wendy's birthday was only a few days away, and he wanted to give her something new that would fit her personality and allow good movement while training and on missions. 
He was about to give up when he saw an outfit at the back of the store, just looking at it he knew that it was perfect. After leaving the cafe, Wendy and Cheryl walked around town seeing the sights. She never got tired of seeing the same town over and over again, as there was always something new every time she visited. Cheryl on the other hand just rested on the girl's arm, she wasn't really interested in the sights, and the cat mostly cared about the little girl's safety. Ever since she remembered the blonde had been the one to protect them from any kind of danger or trouble that they got into. So she made a commitment to grow strong to protect her family. Wendy smiled as she saw the port up ahead of her, the one thing she loved the most of this town was the ocean view. She ran the last few feet and stopped to see the sun ahead, too bad that they would be gone, she would have loved to have seen the sunset again like six months ago. A young dragon slayer spotted a bench, which she went and sat on to enjoy the gentle sea breeze, until it was time to go and meet her father at the station. You know Cheryl, it's too bad we can't stay a little longer, Wendy said to her companion. I know what you mean, I would have liked to see the sunset again, the small cat responded, I can't help but wonder what kind of job Naruto has planned out for us to do. Knowing daddy, he probably will get us a monster extermination or bandit clean up again, Wendy said taking a thinking pose, or maybe it's the destruction of a book. The blue hair girl let out a small giggle at the thought of them searching for a book to destroy, Cheryl just smiled. After the two hours had passed Wendy and Cheryl met up with Naruto at the train station, apparently the blonde had already bought the tickets. Nodding to her the small family made their way into the train and began searching for some empty seats, it would seem that this was the time that everyone rode the train, as there were no empty places. Going to a different compartment that seemed to be a little less crowded, looking around to find two open seats, he spotted a pair near the back. The two well two and a cat arrived at the open seats and sat down, Naruto sat across from Wendy and Cheryl looking straight out of outside. The train soon began to move, none saying a single word for over half an hour until Wendy decided to speak. I know what is out mission. The little blue head asked. The mission is quite simple actually, I decided since it's almost time to join a guild, lately I have been sought quite a lot if you remember the last incident, Naruto said seeing the girl nod, anyways the mission we have is search and destroy. So we're looking for something that needs to be destroyed, Cheryl said as she crossed her arms, well what is that we are looking for then? The book, Naruto responded. Both Wendy and Cheryl face palmed at the irony, Naruto only raised an eyebrow at their action and wondered what brought this on. What's so important about this book that it needs to be destroyed? Wendy asked. Don't know, it's why we're going to meet up with the client to ask why he wants this book gone, Naruto said, what I do know is that it has caused many mages to lose their lives. What could be so tough about destroying a simple book? The cat asked. We'll find out as soon as we get there, the blonde responded. About two hours later they finally arrived at their destination, as the two got out of the train, Naruto began to wonder why the mission was so hard. Naruto walked toward a large house that he was told that he would find the client in, though when he go to the front door something didn't feel right. The smell he was getting from the house was different than the one from the people inside. He knocked on the door and waited for a few seconds before the door opened, and the doorway stood a tall man wearing a black suit. Yes. He asked. We're here to accept your request, Naruto said. Ah, yes, thank you for coming, please enter so I can explain what I want you to do, the man said as he moved away from the doorway. Naruto along with his daughter and Cheryl followed the client to a large room that was clearly the living room, now he knew something was wrong, the scent didn't belong to this guy. But he would not say anything until he got more information on the situation. Please take a seat and make yourselves at home, the man said as he took a seat on the couch, the trio sat down on the couch across from him, now first off, my name is Kirby Mellon. I'm Yuzumaki Naruto, the blonde introduced himself, these are Wendy and Cheryl. A pleasure, would you mind if I asked which guild you're from, since I didn't get the notice saying someone had taken my request, Kirby asked. We're independent mages, I heard about this request in another town while I was searching for something, Naruto said, now please tell me what it is that is causing you so much trouble is. Well all I want you to do is destroy the one and only copy of Daybreak that Duke Everlude owns, Kirby said, please incinerate it. What could be so bad about the book that you wish for it to be destroyed, Cheryl said. It's enough, we will go and locate this book that you want destroyed so bad, Naruto said, Wendy, Cheryl let's go. Kirby watched him leave and placed his head on his hands, thinking about what he would do if they were to fail as well. Do send us something the matter? Asked Wendy slightly worried. That man was lying, there's more to this mission that meets the eye, the scent in that house didn't correspond to him, and the way he said that he wanted us to break into a house to burn a book, Naruto said, that just doesn't sound right, whatever he's hiding I'm going to find out, so prepare for a fight. Wendy gave him a nod as she took of her backpack that she wore and pulled out a pair of blue holsters which she placed on her belt. Opening them she inspected the two trench knives that she had been given by her father a while back. All set, she said making Naruto chuckled. Now it was time for them to get going to the duke's house and complete this mission, by the time they arrived night had fallen. 
the two along with Cherla stood on a tree branch, watching to see how the security ran in this place. After an hour Naruto made his move, jumping from the tree he used his chakra to stick to the wall of the house. Cheryl used her wings to fly Wendy over to Naruto, using chakra the blonde began to walk to the closest window and peeked inside, only to see a storage room. Shaking his head he kept on walking to the next window, which led to kitchen, another bust, this went on until he found what he was looking for, the library. Using wind chakra he sent it through the palm of his hand into the window glass cutting through it, like if it were paper. Once the window was gone he jumped in and landed on the floor below next to him, landed Wendy landed next to him. Looking around to see anyone was the first thing he did, he however spotted the book he was here for, before he could make a move he felt the ground tremble, forcing him to grab the girl and jump. Out of the ground came the biggest woman and ugliest he had ever seen in his new life, but the signature he got from her was different. So you dodge, no matter I will defeat you in honor of my master, she said as she began to submerge into the ground. I don't think so, Naruto said as he punched the floor causing it to crater in and forcing the woman to jump out. You're stronger than the others that have come here, the fat lady said, but no matter I will still defeat you. Before Naruto could say a comeback something came up from behind making him roll out of the way as a large frying pan crashed into his former spot. He saw that two more people had joined the battle, Wendy appeared next to Naruto trench knives drawn out. I guess now is a good time to use this, Naruto said as he pulled out a small golden key, opened the gate of the ram, Ares. A flash of light blinded everyone in the room, when it died down next to the summoner stood a girl with pink hair with horns, she wore a white cotton dress and had her right hand over her mouth. Sorry, how can I help you? She asked. Ares, can you hold the big women back while Wendy and I take care of these two idiots, he said. Yes, I'm sorry, I will do my best, Ares said as she walked to the large woman. The fight didn't last too long as Naruto shot forward slamming his fist into the man who was carrying a large frying pan. Wendy used her vernier to move fast and punch the other man's temple, knocking him out in a single blow. It was at this moment that Duke Everlude appeared from a hole in the ground, Naruto whom felt the vibrations of the Duke move out of the way, just as the man shot towards him. When the Duke was next to him, the blonde did a spinning heel kick, hitting the short man in the chest, thus sending him flying in the wall where he then slumped to the ground unconscious. Naruto shook his head in disappointment, this was the mission that killed many mages, these guys were nothing but a joke, and he looked over his shoulder and saw Ares bowing as she apologized to the fat woman. Tired of this mission he went over to the stool that held the book he came after, as soon as his hand touched it, he felt a large amount of magic in it. Whoever wrote it had used magic to hide something in it, whatever it was he was going to find out what it is, flaring his magic, he sent a wave of it into the book. Instantly letters and sentences shot out of the book and spiraled around Naruto, when all returned to normal he looked at the book again. The title had changed, it now read Dear Kabi shaking his head he opened the book and began to read, he was shocked to say the least at what he was reading, his eyes fell on the duke before closing the book. Ares thanks for your help, Naruto said as he dismissed his stellar spirit, he turned to Wendy next, who was talking to the white cat, Wendy, we need to go and have a small chat with our client. The blue head nodded, she followed Naruto as he left the library heading to the front door. Once out of the open air again the trio walked a path back to the town, no one said a word, but the blonde was agitated for some reason. At last they arrived at the place that the client was staying, Naruto knocked on the door and didn't have to wait long before the door opened. Kirby was stunned to see the blonde back so soon, Nadi was surprised to he was still alive, since not one of the mages had succeeded to come back. When Naruto showed the man the book, he demanded for it to be destroyed, that is until he saw the title that he took the book and began to read. Soon the man was in tears as he read the book, he then went to explain how it was his father who wrote it for three years he was away, and when he came back the man had cut of his arms. Kirby told Naruto how grateful he was but he had no money paid them for their services, the blonde sighed as he knew that this was the reason that he man sent wasn't anywhere in the house. Shaking his head Naruto told him that it was fine, Kirby apologized for making him so hard and not having money to pay. An hour later we find Naruto and his team leaving the town behind on foot, after leaving the client's rented house, he took the decision of going on foot. He didn't really have a destination on mind at the moment, so he was going to travel through the mountain range, Wendy and Cheryl stopped walking when they felt something approach. The blonde also stopped as he looked back at his companions. The ground below him burst open making him jump back, out of the ground he saw a young woman come out, she had shoulder length pink hair, wore a maid's outfit, she had chained shackles on her wrist. And you are? Naruto asked. Forgive me, she said as she kneeled down, I am the celestial spirit Virgo, and I have come to ask thee to be my new summoner. The stellar spirit. Well this is a new one I didn't know that spirits would seek out summoners, Naruto said, sure why not, this way Ares won't be alone. Thank you, my lord, Virgo said as she handed Naruto her golden key. Well let's get down to the contract. Two days later team Naruto was walking through a large valley, the blonde was thinking about the next job that he would have to do. 
Wendy was having a conversation with Cheryl about a new spell that she was trying to master and how close she was. Just as they rounded a corner, a loud roar filled the air, Naruto looked around trying to find out the direction from which it came, the blue head closed her eyes and tried to read the waves to see if she could locate the source. Otu-san, it came from the east, at least half a mile away, Wendy said. I see, Naruto said, Wendy I'm going ahead catch up as soon as you can. Right, the girl responded as her surrogate father took off running in the direction she pointed him in. While running to see the source of the roar he could feel a large amount of magic gathering in the sky, it was the same he felt all those years ago. The same energy he could sense every now and then, anima, the powerful magic that Jello left them to go chazzed. As he got closer he could read two other magical energies, when he finally got to the place he saw a large monkey-like monster raising its arm over its head. Beneath it was a girl no older than 15, she has short snowy white, he could see she had blue eyes, she wore a short red dress with a white collar and bow. Up on her arms above her elbows, she wore gold rings with a pale pink fabric flowing down from it, she also wore tall, black socks and brown shoes. Overall she was rather cute. He turned his attention over to another person, she looked like an older version of the girl in front of the beast. She had white hair tied in a ponytail with a pink bow, she had the same blue eyes. She wore a black sleeveless top that showed her ample bust, a mid-thigh purple skirt, long black socks and black shoes. If the girl in front of the beast was cute this one was smoking hot, he just could tear his eyes away from her and he could feel the heat rising to his cheeks. Shaking his head from any perverted thought that were starting to form he glanced back at the beast, the time he spent checking the girl out cost him as he saw it hit the younger girl ascending her flying. Lasana. He heard the older girl shout. Cursing under his breath Naruto jumped from his place towards the girl, successfully catching her bridal style, he used his wind chakra to push himself in the direction of the other girl. Landing on the ground he placed the girl in his arms down and brought his hand to her neck checking her pulse, he sighed in relief when he felt her still alive. It was at this moment that he felt a strange pull on her, the same feeling as the anima, remembering what Jell had told him he began a chant that would negate the foreign magic. After a few seconds the anima receded leaving the girl alone. The Santa, Naruto heard the other girl call her. Looking up from his position he saw the girl had moved from her place to be next to her younger sister. She's still alive, Naruto assured her, for the moment, she will die if we don't her medical attention soon. But, we won't be going anywhere with that thing still here. The elf Nai Nai Si Cha Chan, a soft voice called. Naruto glanced at the girl on the ground and saw tears in her eyes as she looked at the incoming beast, it was as if she was calling it. What does she mean? The blonde asked. That beast is our brother, he's using takeover magic, the older girl responded. I see, so it's not some wild beast going berserk, it's that he can't control his magic, Naruto deducted, this make things easier. Lasana Lasana open your eyes. The white-haired beauty shouted as her sister closed her eyes. Shit, she won't make it her wounds are rather extensive, Naruto said as a shadow loomed over them. The blonde quickly turned around just to see the beast raise his arm, making three hand signs as fast as he could he release an air bullet, sending the monster flying back. The older white head watched in fascination as the blonde boy sent her brother flying with a single spell, not one that she was familiar with though. Naruto. A voice called out. The attention turned to a white cat with wings flying to them, in her arms was a blue-haired girl. Wendy, Cheryl, good timing, Naruto called as his daughter landed a few feet away and ran to him. Sorry, we're late, Wendy said. No time, listen see the girl behind me, I want you to heal her she's in really bad shape, Naruto told her. We'll do too San, she said as she went to heal Lasana. Meanwhile the older girl had her mouth wide open, she had just heard that the little girl was a healer, but what shocked her most was what the girl called him. How could he be her father, he wasn't that much older than she was so there was no way he could be her father. Naruto walked over to the fallen beast as it was standing up, he raised his hand, and in a flash of light a sword appeared in his hand. It was at least the same size of him, it had a scaly grip, a skull-designed pommel, and the blade itself seemed to be wrapped in white bandages. Lysanda's older sister stared at the strangest sword she had ever seen, another thing that drew her attention was the fact that he re faster than even her guild mate Urza. The beast let out another ferocious roar at Naruto, who only grinned at him. Don't hurt him please, shouted the girl. Naruto turned to her and nodded, the beast saw this as an opportunity and immediately attacked. Naruto's attention returned to the possessed mage and raised Samahata to block the incoming fist. When the fist made contact with the blade, a strange sensation coursed through his giant body, almost as if someone was sucking out all of his magic. Deep inside the subconsciousness of the beast a floating spirit of a white-haired man began to awaken. When he did he could feel the control of the beast being drawn away, all of this made him wonder what was going on. Feeling the control of the beast wavering, he pushed all of his willpower forward in order to take control of his body back. Outside Naruto could sense that something was also fighting the beast from the inside, tightening his grip on Samahata, he willed it to drain the beast faster. 
however the possessed beast went even more berserk. Kuzo, Naruto cussed under his breath. At this rate someone is going to get injured or worse killed. The white-haired girl watched in horror as her brother went into a worse state of possession. The next thing she was the blonde throw the sword into the air and brought his hands together and went through a set of strange signs. Wood style. Deep root bindings. She heard the blonde shout. The ground below them began to shake as roots shot out wrapping around the beast. Once wrapped in the roots, he was then brought down to the ground with the roots tightened even more around the beast's body. The possessed elfman was violently shaking as he tried to regain control over his body. After minutes of struggling, the beast began to howl as if in pain, as it managed to rip some of the roots and gripped his head in pain. Soon a golden light engulfed him. In a final flash of light, the beast finally banished and in its place laid a teen boy, he had the same white hair as the girls, his clothes were torn in many places, his shirt was missing also. Elfman, he heard the girl behind call out. Soon she ran past him to be next to the boy. He on the other hand turned to see Wendy doing her best to heal Lysana, he could tell that she was growing tired as she was not used to healing to such a length. Going over to her he placed his hand on her shoulder, without a word she understood what he wanted, letting the light in her palms die down, she slumped onto the ground dead tire. Naruto kneeled next to Lysana and ran through a few hand signs before his palms began to glow a soft green light, next he placed his palms on the girl's chest. The other girl was currently attending to her brother who was not heavily injured, but his magic reserves were depleted, meaning that he wouldn't be waking anytime soon. Twenty minutes had passed when Naruto finally allowed the healing jutsu to die down, he had managed to heal the girl to the point that she was out of danger. She would make a full recovery in time, but for the next 72 hours, she would need to be under observation to make sure she didn't fall into the danger zone again. There, she just needs to rest for now, Naruto said as he stood up to stretch. Thank you, he heard the older sister say. It was no problem, but we shouldn't celebrate yet, I need to keep an eye on your sister for the next 72 hours to make sure she's okay, Naruto said, also, I never did get your name. Warahin, she responded. Naruto, the blonde introduced himself, it seems that we won't be going anywhere tonight. Warahin nodded in agreement, she was still looking at her sister however, she had come so close to losing the last of her family today. She turned to see Naruto going through a series of hand signs, she was confused as she had never seen such magic before, sure there was Laki Ali Eda who could use wood magic too, but Naruto's was different. Wood style. Four pillar house jutsu. Naruto called out slamming his right palm on the ground. Mira's jaw hit the ground as she saw a large two-story house rise from the ground. Now she was curious, this wood magic of his was way more advanced than Laki's. Alright, let's move them inside, Naruto said as he went over to where Elfman was and picked him up. Mira watched worried as Naruto moved her brother into the house, inside he reached into his pouch and pulled out four cards. Naruto then sent some chakra into them before tossing them onto the floor. In a small cloud of white smoke four beds appeared. Taking the closest one, he placed a big teen on his shoulder onto it. His hands started to glow green again as he ran a scan of the boy's body, he didn't have that much damage on him, except for a few bruises, the only thing that was wrong was that his magic levels were low and he would be out for a few hours. Naruto walked out of the house to see Mira running her hand through Lysana's hair as the girl slept. Smiling at the sight he looked over at where Wendy was resting, he was right when he guessed that she would so tire that she would fall asleep. Shaking his head, Naruto made a single clone to move Wendy into the house, while went over to Lysana. Let's move her inside, Naruto said as he picked up the Lysana bridal style. Barahin followed the blonde inside the house and saw that it was quite spacious. There were four beds in the room already, two were occupied by her brother and Naruto's companion. The blonde moved to the third bed, where he laid the sleeping Lysana. Mira took one last look at the blonde whose hand was glowing green again and on top of her sister's chest before she walked out. Outside she saw that there was a fire already burning. Naruto walked out of the house and saw that the fire he had ordered a clone to build was burning. He looked around and could see a smoking village in the distance, if he had to guess it was probably around 10 miles away give or take a mile. The village had probably been attacked by the beast that had taken over Elfman. He put all that in the back of his mind for later, instead he opted to see if Marahan was okay. Naruto found her sitting on a rock ten feet away from the house, a worried expression on her face, something that he didn't like for some reason. A jewel for your thoughts, he said as he approached her. Mira looked up from her place and then went back to looking at the ground, it's nothing. I may not know you well enough but, I can tell something is bothering you, Naruto said as he sat down across from her, as he pulled out a small box from his pouch, it's best if you talk about. Also let me see that arm of yours. I came close to losing not only my little sister, but also my little brother, all because of a stupid mistake, she said as she let him look at her arm, making her blush at the contact, after our parents died, I swore to grow strong in order to keep them safe, but I'm still weak if I couldn't even properly use my takeover magic. I'm a failure as an older sister. 
Naruto watched as the girl before him just broke down in tears, he was currently bandaging her broken hand. I don't know about you, but I would have loved to have someone to keep me safe when I was growing up, just because you made a mistake mean that you have to beat yourself up. In the end nothing bad happened. That's because you showed up and helped us, Lysanda would have died, and Elfman would probably not return to normal, and if he did, he would never forgive himself for killing Lysanda, Mira continued as tears streamed down her face. I'm not very good with these sorts of things, but remember that every living thing will one day die, Naruto said as he finished with her arm. In this occasion that didn't occur so quit beating yourself up and just be happy that they are alive. Marahan watched a blonde with wide eyes as she remembered that Lysanda had told the same thing about death to Elfman the day his parakeet died. For some reason she found her face heating up and her heart speeding up, she just then sat there thinking about what she'd been told. He was right nothing had happened so she shouldn't sad she should be relieved that he arrived to help them even if they didn't know each other. He reached into a case that was on his belt and pulled out three cards from it, out of the cards he summoned a bottle of water, a kettle, and ten cups of Raymond. She decided to go and check on her siblings in the house. He filled the kettle with the water and placed it on the burning embers and waited for it to boil. It took it five minutes for the water to finally boil. Mira chose this time to come out of the house to see Naruto grumbling about how instant Raymond wasn't instant, if it need three minutes to cook Will poured boiling water into the ten Raymond cups in front of him. She couldn't help but giggle for some odd reason. So which guild do you belong to? Asked Mira as she took a seat near the fire. None, we're independent mages, Naruto responded, by the mark I saw on Lasana, I take it you're from Fairy Tale. Yep, Mira said, I was just recently made an S-class mage not too long ago, and this was supposed to be my first S-rank mission. I see, even though you're young you have large magic reserves, Naruto told her as he passed her a cup of Raymond and picked one for himself. The two ate in quiet. And I ask you why the little girl called you father, since she seems to be at least 10 years old and you don't seem to be older than 17. Asked Mira. She took it upon herself to call me that ever since I rescued her from some bandits nearly 5 years ago, Naruto said. Mira wondered if she were to be captured if someone would do the same for her, the picture of Naruto appeared in her head instantly. Well I think that I will rest now if you don't mind, she said getting up. What will you do tomorrow? Asked Naruto. We will return to Magnolia Town, Mira said. Hope you don't mind me tagging along, I don't feel comfortable in letting Lysanda travel with someone with no medical experience, the blonde said. I would like that, the whitehead said. Also before you go I want talk to you about something Naruto said making her stop. Two days later, Team Naruto and Team Marahin stood just outside the gates of Magnolia Town. Naruto had to whistle at the size of the town, it was larger than even Kanoha was, there were people happily doing their business. This was the first time he and his family had ever been in Magnolia. Not wanting to waste any more time the two teams began to walk into the city heading to the magic guild that resided in this place. As they walked they could tell people were looking at them. It wasn't every day that you see a large group of mages walking in like this. Naruto walked next to Marahin who had her arm in a sling, he was carrying Lysanna on his back, whom had her arms wrapped around the blonde's neck. Wendy walked next to Elfman with Cheryl resting on her head. Elfman had his right side of his face wrapped in bandages and he wore one of Naruto's spare cloaks. This place is amazing, Naruto commented. Nah, is this your first time in Magnolia Town Naruto-kun? Asked Lysanna from her resting place. It is, we have been nearly all over the continent, but we always evaded the major towns that had a magic guild, since I know that I wouldn't be able to find any good jobs, he responded, so how much further until we get to the guild? Not far now, it was Mira who responded, we just need to cross the bridge and then walk up the hill, and we'll be there. Naruto-san, have you decided if you're going to join yet? Elfman asked. I don't know, Naruto lied as he had already decided that he would, I mean, I want us to join a place that way we won't be targeted as much anymore, but the thought of being in one place sounds troublesome when we're used to traveling as much. But still maybe you should just give it a try who knows you may find a reason to like it, Lysanna said with a grin as she winked at her sister who blushed. Naruto gave a nervous laugh, Wendy wondered what she meant by that comment and thought about something that her father was missing. She glanced at Marahin who was looking away with a pink tint on her cheeks, then it hit her what she and father were missing, well more like her, a mother. A mischievous smirk appeared on her face that only Cheryl noticed and wondered what was going through her head. The shiver went down both Marahin's and Naruto's back. The rest of the trip was made in relative quietness, after crossing the bridge the group made their way up to the guild. When he finally stood in front of the guild, he couldn't help but show his surprise at the size and style, it was an Arabian-style building with a guild symbol on a flag. Nice place, Naruto said. Just wait till you see the inside Naruto-kun, Lasana said. Just be ready in case there's a fight going on again, Mira said. Marahin pushed the guild's door open and walked in, Elfman followed her and last Naruto, along with Lasana, Wendy, and Cheryl entered. 
If the blonde thought that the outside was amazing the inside was even better, people were sitting at tables chatting and drinking happily with their friends. He could tell that many had a large amount of magic, while others had a decent amount, however he could tell that one stood above the rest. Looking for the source he saw a rather short man sitting at the bar's counter smoking a pipe that was it, he was the one who was letting out such a strong amount of magic. The amount he was letting out was almost at his level without having to use his sage mode and tailed cloak. We're home. Lysana called out. Every head in the building turned their attention to the door, and many questions began to fly in their heads. They all had same thought going through their heads, what had happened to Marahin's team as they saw their state, and who the blonde was and the little girl with them, but many turned their attention to the white cat with them. The master turned his attention to the team and began to panic as he saw the state they were in, but what worried him the most was the state of Lysana, he could feel that her magic reserves were low, and that she was hurt. He was however curious about the ones that were with took only one glance at the blonde to tell him that he was no pushover, his magic reserves rivaled his easily, and they were still growing, he could sense something stronger deep with him. The little girl who was with the cat was also strong, she also seemed to release an aura that resembled his old friend Perusika. The master watched as they made their way over to him. We're back master, Marahin told the old man. Welcome back, Mira, I see that you didn't come back alone though, the master told her as he took a drag of his pipe. Well we ran into some big time trouble, Mira responded. Not that I mind, but is there any place I can put Lysana at? Asked the blonde. Here I'll take her to the medical wing, Elfman said taking the girl of Naruto who pouted at being removed. Yes, go ahead Elfman, Mira here will tell me what happened and as to why they are here, Master told the young man. As Elfman left, Marahin began to tell the short man everything that happened, to say that he was shocked was an understatement. He couldn't believe what had happened, he had virtually sent three young mages to their death, he didn't know how they would have survived if Naruto hadn't arrived. That was another thing that intrigued him, apparently this boy was capable of using wind magic and re magic which were rather rare types. I see, the master nodded his head, tell me Naruto-san, what do you plan to do now? Well I was planning on joining a guild, the blonde responded. Very well, then would like to join Fairy Tail, I'm sure that both Mira and Lysanna would like it if you and your teammates joined us. I don't know, Naruto said, maybe but first I have a request Master Makarov. What is it my boy? The short master asked. I would like a fight against you, Naruto said. The guild went instantly quiet, everyone stared at the blonde as if he'd grown a second head. How crazy was he challenging the master to a fight? Makarov stared at the blonde as if trying to see if he had any ulterior moves, then he chuckled until it became a full-out laugh. If that's what you want then I will accept, but, one question, why? Makarov asked responded Naruto. A few months ago I had a small dispute with the mages from Phantom Lord, Naruto said making Makarov eyes open wide, I wish to see where I stand against one of the ten wizard saints. Very well follow me, we can't have our spar here, or the guild will surely be reduced to rubble, Makarov said standing up and going to the door. The rest of the guild couldn't believe what was going on, this boy comes into their guild and challenges their master. A few of them wondered what was so special of that blonde, up on the second floor, a blonde-haired mage with a scar on his face, watched as his grandfather was challenged. A grin appeared on his face, he had to see this fight, he disappeared in a bolt of lightning. A few hundred yards away from the guild and the town Makarov and Naruto stood facing each other, they could see that the entire guild had come to watch. The old man could even see that his grandson who never really attended spars between mages, had come to watch. Shall we start Naruto-san? Asked Makarov. Let's, Naruto responded taking a stance. In the crowd a raven-haired boy who was only wearing a pair of black pants and no shirt, stood next to a brown-haired beauty who wore some rather provocative attire. So Kana who do you think will win? The raven-haired boy asked. Do you even have to ask Grey, Master will win, the girl known as Kana said, I'm just glad that neither Natsu and Urza are here, Natsu would have challenged this guy. Yeah, I don't even want to know what Urza would do, Grey told her. Back at the match neither combatant had made their move yet, the guild was anticipating seeing the biggest match ever. Then it began, Naruto ran towards the short man, his hand cocked back to punch, Makarov seeing this raised his hand and it instantly enlarged. The blonde saw this and the image of his old friend Choji came to mind, since this was similar to his expansion jutsu, channeling chakra in the soles of his feet, he shot forward like a rocket. Master was surprised at the sudden burst of speed and made a fist with his hand, which he then brought down straight at Naruto. Naruto jumped over the fist launched his own at the wizard saint, Makarov jumped back as the blonde's fist made contact with the ground. His eyes widened so much that they threatened to fall off as he saw the place that he stood was reduced to nothing but a large crater. This boy had some crazy strength if he called such a large crater. Holy shit. Said Grey with his mouth wide open. You can say that again, an older man next to him said. You have amazing strength, Makarov said, I guess I have to really have give it my all. 
Naruto watched as he began to float in the air, the next thing was the multiple golden magic circles appeared all around the shorter man. Knowing that he was about to use a spell Naruto brought his hands together and began to do a chain of hand signs, as soon as he landed on the last one multiple beams of light shot out of the circles. Earth style. Mud wall jutsu called out Naruto as he spit out a large amount of mud from his mouth that turned into a wall. The beams of light struck the wall of dirt, the wall did its job and took a few hits, but it was overpowered and the attack broke through creating a cloud of dust. Whoa, he can do earth magic, Kana said. Yeah, but I've never seen someone actually spit out mud from their mouth like he did, said a man with a strange hairstyle and smoking a pipe, have you Macau? No, Macau responded, that kid is full of tricks. First he made a crater with his bare hands now this. The dust soon cleared revealing that the blonde was no longer in the same place, everyone started to look for him, but was nowhere to be seen. Makarov landed on the ground and used his sensor ability to locate his opponent. It was at this moment that his eyes widened and forced him to jump just as a pair of hands shot out the ground below him. Naruto seeing that his headhunter Jutsu failed rose out of the ground and stared at the floating man. Almost got me with that one, the old man said. Naruto took in a deep breath as his body began to glow, then he vanished, all eyes began to search again. All the searching stopped when a loud smack of colliding flesh resounded. All turn up to see Naruto with his fist collided against Makarov's cheek, sending the poor old man to the ground. What the hell was that? Shouted a female mage with violet-colored hair. That was his swift release, a new voice said. The mages turned their attention to the new voice to see a small white cat coming in their direction along with Wendy. Wendy went and stood next to Laxus who was rather interested in the technique and waited for the cat to explain it. Swift release. What type of magic is that? Mira asked. The technique that requires him to combine both wind and lighting together, Wendy said. That's crazy, Macau shouted, that should be impossible. Laxa stared at the blonde, that spell was out of this world, he prided himself in his speed, but here come a total stranger out the blue with the ability to outrun him. There's no way a spell like that would exist without a side effect thought Laxus. A spell like that wouldn't exist without a drawback, Laxus decided to voice his opinion drawing the attention to him. You're right that technique can only be used by those born with what Naruto calls Keke Genkai, Cheryl said. Bloodline limit? Asked Gray. Basically what it means you need to be born with the genes to use something like that, Cheryl finished explaining, if you wish to know more then ask Naruto. They turned their attention to their master as he stood up and wiped a bit of blood from the side of his mouth. That's some speed you got there, I understate made it you, now I will go to the next level, Makarov said as his body began to expand. Naruto was instantly on the defense as Makarov began launching attacks after attacks after enlarging his hands. Naruto had to dodge as he knew that one of those fists would hurt. But as fate would have it one of the fists managed to land in his chest, sending him into the trees nearby. Looks like Master One, a rather large man said. No, Wendy said, O2 Sen is not down yet it would take more than that to beat him. People soon began to wonder why she called Naruto her father, as he was no way the father of a ten-year-old. They filed that to ask later. Naruto had walked out of the woods wiping a bit of blood from his face. Yes I have to take this to the next level too, Naruto said as his body began to glow. No way, re-quip. Said Grey as the light faded and Naruto stood there wearing a strange outfit. Naruto now wore a pair of black ninja pants, blue sandals, a black long sleeve shirt, and a green vest, he also had a black mask covering his lower part of his face. Naruto called forward his magic and sped at the old man, hoping to finish this battle soon. Makarov wondered why he switched from his outfit into a new one, Naruto, then began with those strange hand signs again. Wood style. Binding roots. Naruto said. Makarov waited for something to happen, but he was surprised when Root shot out and began to wrap around his large body. He saw the blonde smirk and began to do more strange signs. He can do wood magic too? Locky the violet-haired girl said with stars in her eyes. Wind style. Drilling air bullet, Naruto said as he shot a ball of compressed air at the tied up of man. Makarov knew that if he didn't dodge the attack that it would hurt so he did the only thing he could powering up his body grew even more snapping the roots. He then used his hand to redirect the bullet in another direction, magic circles appeared around him again, this time the beams of light shot out faster than last time. Naruto used his flexibility to dodge but one hit him in his right shoulder, which was the turning point, as that one hit stunned him long enough for other beams to hit him driving him into the ground. At the same time he returned to his normal size. Now it's over, Mikau said. Laxus on the other hand was frowning for some reason, then it hit a large spike and energy came from where Naruto was being drilled into the ground. Shinra Tensei shouted Naruto as the beams of light were blasted away by some sort of invisible energy. When the dust that had accumulated dispersed Naruto stood there, his mask was torn as was most of his vest and shirt. He then grabbed what remained of his vest and shirt and finished ripping them off his body. 
Some of the girls in the crowd blushed at the sight of his well-developed torso, while others were drawn to the fist-sized scar above his heart. However what drew the most attention were his eyes, they were no longer blue. They were now a light purple color with five black rings. What's with his eyes? Asked Kana. He's already using his Rinnegan, Wendy said covering her mouth as she remembered the last time he used those eyes. Rinnegan? Asked Gray and Macau at the same time. I don't know much about them as Naruto doesn't really use them that much, Cheryl said, I've seen him use them only once before to end a fight as soon as possible. But, Wendy said, when he uses his eyes he becomes even stronger. Naruto said his hand, Bancho Tenen. Makarov suddenly felt a strange pull on his body before he went flying straight at Naruto who cocked his hand back. When he was near enough the blonde launched his fist into the short man's face, sending him flying back. Everyone wondered what the hell just happened. Naruto however didn't stop there he pointed his arm out again. The fairy tail master landed on the ground and braced himself for when that strange force would pull him again. Flaming arrow missiles. Naruto shouted as his arm separated from his body only connected by a thick black cord. Out of the cord missiles shot out homing on Makarov. Said man was even more curious about the boy, he had some sort of powerful magic that he had never seen before. The first was those strange spells that he did when making those hand signs. Then it was these spell that he was using after he activated those weird eyes of his, now this. Makarov knew that those things would cause some serious injuries, but he wasn't a member of the ten wizard saints for nothing. Placing both hands in front of him, various yellow spell circles appeared taking the blunt force of the attack. Naruto knew that his jutsu had just been blocked. Smiling as the smoke rose he sprinted forward, just as he was about reached the cloud of smoke he jumped out of the way as a large fist came from above. He wondered how the hell the old man had been able to surprise him. He knew that he would have to up his game. The smoke cleared as Makarov landed on the ground looking a little tired. Age bush and no jutsu, Naruto said as he made a cross sign. And three small clouds of smoke three exact replicas of Naruto appeared each of them jumping away. What the hell he can make clones, Kana said, this guy has some powerful magic. Laxus had gone silent, he was enjoying this for some reason. This guy was strong just what fairy tale needed to stay at number. A grin appeared on his face at the thought of having a fight with this guy one day. I think we should end this fight soon, Makarov said. Yeah, Naruto responded. Makarov enlarged his body once again as he jumped at the blonde. Naruto could see the attacks coming and used the minimum amount of work to dodge the attacks. The old man tried to attack the blonde form his blind side, but for some reason he would just dodge them without taking his attention from him. How is he doing that? Makarov asked himself, there is no way he could predict my attacks that are going at him from his blind side. So how is he doing it? Wait the clones he made earlier aren't attacking me they're just observing that's it they're transferring their sight to him. The question now is how could it be telepathy? No I would sense him using it if he was. Then it must be sight. That's it those strange eyes of his must allow him to see what his clones see. Makarov stopped his attacks and landed a few feet away. I see now, the old man said, those you can see what those clone of yours see, that's how you've been able to dodge the attacks from your blind side. He truly is powerful if he can figure out the Rinnegan sight sharing ability so quickly Naruto thought. He can see what the clones are seeing because of the eyes. Asked an orange-haired mage wearing sunglasses. Alok when the hell did you get here? Asked Mikau. Just a few moments ago, I arrived at the guild, but it was empty, Will Elfman was there, and he told me that I would find the rest of you here, the now named Loke explained, something about a fight between master and a newcomer. I'm truly impressed that you managed to figure out the secret of the Rinnegan, Naruto said, but I won't be going down without a fight. Naruto closed his and stood still for around a minute, during the time Makarov's eyes widened when he felt the boy draw in the land's magic. What the hell is he doing? He's drawing in the magic of the land and balancing it with his own body's magic Makarov thought, how this possible, no human body is capable contain such amount of power. He wasn't the only one to feel the power that Naruto was drawing in, some of the more experienced sensing mages felt it too. Naruto soon opened his eyes to see that he still had those purple eyes of his, but there was now a black horizontal bar in the center. There was also some sort of red tint around his eyes. Sage mode, Naruto said. Damn I still can't control this combination for too long, so I will have to end this as fast as I can he thought. Makarov could feel the power literally rolling of the boy. It was as if he was fighting the land itself now. Not wanting to find out what all he could do in that form, he began chanting a spell under his breath. Naruto in the meantime was charging his hand with chakra as a blue orb began to form. In seconds the Rasengan was fully formed, he still continued to charge it up to an even higher level, making the orb grow to a super size. The spectators began to back away. They could sense that, that orb was dangerous if not for its eyes then from the amount of magic in it. Naruto ran at the old man hand raised above his head. His opponent watching him come released a powerful light spell. 
Naruto would not be able to dodge such a large attack, that is until the three clones that were made earlier appeared in front of the original, taking the full force of the spell. Naruto took this chance to his advantage. Using his clones back he jumped into the air twirling twice as he sent the large Rasengan forward. Suddenly three bright pillars of energy burst from around the smaller man, just as the Rasengan crashed into them, creating a massive explosion. The wind that was picked up from the explosion sent most of the fairy tail mages flying back, some of the stronger ones were only pushed back. A large amount of dust picked up as well as smoke. All the way on Magnolia the citizens saw that large dome of smoke in the distance and began to worry about who would attack. Some of the mages that were in the crowd were shaking in fear as they could feel the large amount of power radiating in that direction. There were three particular mages who were staring at the smoke. One was a short girl around the age of 15 with bright blue hair and greenish brown eyes. She wore an orange dress with white trimmings. Next to her were two males. One was tall and slim with a distinctive hairstyle. The other was a medium-sized teen who wore a hat. What the hell was that? asked the taller one. The hell should I know droy? The smaller male responded, what do you think Levy? I don't know, I can feel a lot of magic in that direction, some of the signatures belong to our friends, the girl Levy responded. Could we have been attacked while we were gone? Droy asked. I don't know, let's go see, Jet, Droy, Levy said as she began running in the direction. Back at the battle the smoke was finally clearing up. People around were struggling to stand up and some were knocked out. When the smoke finally cleared they could see both Makarov and Naruto standing up. You know I think we're gonna like it here in Fairy Tail, Naruto said. Well then I guess we'll be having a welcoming party for the two of you when we go back, Makarov said. The two gave a smile before collapsing at the same time. So who won? Asked Kana who had finally gotten up. I guess it's a draw, Gray answered her question. Well here is the rewrite of this chapter, for some reason it got even longer. Yes Naruto didn't use his dragon slayer magic yet again, or the Jubi's power why. He's got to have an ace up his sleeve for later. Also Naruto will have the Sharingan, but won't be using it till later, most likely during the Phantom Lord arc. And yes I have already chosen what his Susanoo will look like thanks to orange blocks. I took out the bleach elements I just can't seem to fit them in. I want this to be a straight out fairy tale Naruto crossover. Anyways as you know I have two more crossovers in the same category Kano has Dark Mage and Naruto Fernandes. Something I didn't explain in the latter one was that Naruto will know the same magic as Jell, Altier, and Meridi. But also he will have the lost magic of Azuma, Rusturus, and Zancro. Not only those, but also Hades' pure Hito chain magic, I think it's kick-ass, not only that since Kashina can use those chakra chains, these will make her wonder if he inherited her special chakra. The pairing for that story is Naruto Meridi, the first ever pairing with her. Still thinking if I should a second girl. Chapter 5 The Fairy Tale Mage Well here is the new chapter of Fairy Fox, but I can't guarantee that it will be as long as the last one. This one was supposed to be out last week on Friday, but my teacher took all us by surprise by giving us a new assignment. I was given a 10-page research essay in my English class, and the bad thing was that it had to be turned in by Sunday at midnight. And I will say this once and only once, for me school comes first, work comes second, and third my personal problems. So if I don't update fast enough I am sorry, but I have other things going on in my life, so just be patient with me. Naruto was currently sitting at the guild's bar glancing at his surrogate daughter as she showed off her guild mark to Cheryl. Two days had passed since his fight against Makarov and he was back to 100%, as for the old man he had to go back to bed after his friend, Puryusuka, got her hands on him. He and Wendy would need to take on a mission soon, as it had been almost a week since their last one. The Bond then watched out of the corner of his eye as the blue-haired girl he met yesterday walked towards Wendy. If he wasn't mistaken, her name was Levy McGarden, a 15-year-old mage. The blonde saw her make small talk with the younger blue head and the white Nico. A smile formed on his face, knowing that his surrogate daughter was starting to make new friends. Next he sensed someone sit on the stool next to his. Naruto turned his head and saw Marahin sitting there with a slight pink tint on her cheeks, making her look rather cute. Is there something that you needed Mirachan? Asked the blonde with a smile. Well since Lasana and Elfman are out due to injury I thought that maybe we could go on a mission together, along with Wendy and Cheryl of course, Mira said, making Naruto chuckle. I guess since Master will be in bed for the next few days we could go and do a quick mission, but I think it's best if we leave Wendy and Cheryl here, Naruto said, I think she's finally making friends. Didn't she have friends? Asked the white-haired beauty. Not really we moved around so much that we barely stayed any time in a town to make friends so we didn't have many, I mean sure we have a few from other guilds, but we don't see them that much at all, said Naruto as he stood up, come let's go choose a mission as I am getting a little bored. Cheryl who was sipping tea out of her teacup that she got from who knows where sat listening to Wendy tell her new friend Levy about her travels. She watched as that girl Marahin approached Naruto with a blush on her face as she began to talk to him about something, however since she was too far away she couldn't hear them. 
The cat saw Naruto stand up and go over to the request board followed by Mira, by the looks of it, it would seem as they were about to on a mission. Knowing that he didn't call them over by now then they would be staying behind here in the guild until he returned. Cheryl saw him pick a flyer and gave to Mira who went to report it so they could get going while Naruto walked in their direction. Wendy, Naruto called out. The blue-haired girl turned her head to look at him, hi, Tusan. I will be going on a mission with Mira, I want you and Cheryl to stay here and wait for me to return, the blonde informed her, Levy, I would like to ask you to take care of her until I return if you don't mind. Of course, that way I can get to know her more, Levy said with a large smile on her face and a happy tone in her voice. Thank you, Naruto responded before patting Wendy's head, then left to join Mira who was waiting for him at the door. Ready? Asked Mira. Let's go, was the response. Wendy watched her father leave with Lysanna's elder sister, she felt strange to not be going with him on a mission. But at the same time she was happy to not have to go on a mission so soon after arriving at the guild. On the road of Magnolia Naruto walked next to Marahin as they headed to the train station to catch the next train of Onibus town. The mission that they had chosen was the extermination of a group of bandits that were terrorizing the roads leading to town. From what the mission stated it said that there were about 30 of them, so it wouldn't be too difficult for them. Marahin is an S-class mage, and one doesn't achieve that kind of status without good reason, and he himself would be considered an even higher rank than S-class if he went all out. When they arrived at the station, Mira went to buy the tickets that they would need to travel. Naruto just waited by watching people walk by. It didn't take long for his partner to return with the tickets, and both went to board the train, from the tickets it seemed that the girl got first-class tickets. The blonde followed the white head as she led him to the front of the train to their compartments. When they got there the two entered and sat across each other. So what's the real reason to why you wanted me to do a mission with you? Asked Naruto. I just wanted to thank you again for saving my little sister and brother, I don't know what I would have done if something had happened to the two of them, Mira responded, and this way I think we could get to know each other some more, and I could tell you about the rest of the people in the guild. Okay, then how should we do this okay, how about name, likes, dislikes, and dreams for the future? Naruto said, here I'll go first, my name is Naruto Uzumaki, I like my daughter Wendy, Cheryl, Raymond, training, I dislike rapists, perverts, and dark mages, as for my dreams for the future, I don't really know at the moment. Okay, my name is Marahin Strauss, I like my younger siblings Elfman and Lasana, my magic takeover, I dislike Urza, as for my dreams, to be the strongest in fairy tale, and have a family of my own, Marahin said. Uzurza. The blonde asked as he was sure he had heard the name before, but couldn't place a finger on it. Urza Scarlet is Fairy Tail's strongest female mage, she's on a mission at the moment, so you didn't get to meet her yet, Mira said, also Natsu wasn't there a good thing, or else he would have challenged you to a fight, and neither was Mystigan, but he's never around and is very mysterious. Natsu eh? What kind of magic can he do? Asked the blonde. He's a dragon slayer, the fire dragon slayer, Mira responded. Oh Igneal's son, Naruto said. Igneal? You know him? Asked the girl with a surprised tone that someone knew about Natsu's father. Not personally, I heard of Igneal from another source, not to mention Wendy is also a dragon slayer, more precise the sky dragon slayer, continued Naruto. Then that's two dragon slayers in our guild, Mira deduced. More like three with me but I won't tell anyone just yet, and the only people who know about that are Wendy, Cheryl, and Jell, wherever the hell he's at thought Naruto, but for some reason that guy Laxus I think was his name, also let out some strange magic vibes that felt almost like my dragon slayer magic, but different. Is something the matter? You just go quiet all of a sudden, Mira asked. No, just thinking about the two dragon slayers, Naruto said, anyways we should get some rest before we arrive at Onibus. Mira nodded her head in agreement as she lay on the seat she was on and closed her eyes, Naruto glanced at her, and for some reason he felt his heart skip a beat. Ever since they met he just couldn't help but look at her at any chance he got. Could he be falling in love again? Sure he died in the elemental nations and couldn't go back, but he was sure that he would always be faithful to Kuritsuchi, since he had a real daughter with her. He was so confused at the moment maybe he just felt attracted to her because she reminded him of his wife. In the end he just laid down to rest as it would be a 10 hour ride to get to Onibus. By the time they go to Onibus town the sun had already set, so the Toad decided to go and find a hotel to spend the night before going to find the client in the morning. As they walked down the streets Naruto spotted the theater where people were just leaving from. Coincidentally the hotel was close to the place, and just as they passed Naruto spotted a familiar face among the crowd of people along with two others. Knowing what would happen if he was spotted by them, he grabbed Marahin's hand and dragged her the rest of the way. He wanted to get out of the street so fast that he failed to notice the blush on the girl's face. At the hotel he got two rooms for them. After parting ways in the hall of the hotel Naruto went into his room and headed straight for the window to see down onto the streets. 
Down below he could see two of the three persons he had spotted earlier standing talking, he narrowed his eyes as he tried to locate the third one. Then he saw her arrive, a pink-haired woman wearing a long elegant kimono that showed off part of her cleavage. They're none other than members of the Dark Guild Death's Head Caucus Guild, a guild he had the unfortunate pleasure to run into as they had tried to recruit him. This made him wonder what they were doing here as they never went to public places such as a theater unless there was some sort of bounty on someone's head. He could still remember when he first met them, he had done a rookie mistake and understate made it their power. Vilvita Staka's hair magic and guitar magic took him by surprise along with the owl-headed Fukuro, whose jet magic and absorption magic nearly defeated him. Then there was the beautiful yet deadly Ikaruga who destroyed five of his swords, each with a single swing of her sword. That had been his first encounter with a powerful team of dark mages, and since then he made sure to not understatement any opponent. But at the moment he didn't want to have to deal with them, so he was hoping to not run into them the next day. Shaking his head he moved away from the window and decided to go to bed early, even after sleeping on the train. The next day he met with Marahin, and the two went to have something to eat before going to the client's office. On their way to find a place to eat Naruto could see very little people walking in the streets, and the last time he was here the place was bustling with activity. Something was indeed wrong, and he was thinking that the bandits weren't the problem, but he would not say anything to Mira for the time being. After the two finished eating breakfast at a small restaurant, they went to find the client who happened to be the mayor of Onibus. The mayor was happy to see them, especially Naruto who had helped him in the past, after Naruto showed the mayor his guild mark that was on his wrist. The man was surprised that the blonde had finally joined a guild and was happy for him. The mayor then began to tell them about the bandit group that had taken over the road that led to the town, scaring away tourists and other visitors. He didn't have much information about them, except that there were about 30 of them. Naruto thanked the man and excused himself and Mira. So what do you think? Asked Mira as soon as they were back outside. Something doesn't make sense, if there were regular bandits, then the local authorities would have no problem dealing with them, unless there is something that the mayor hid from us, Naruto informed her, just be ready for anything. The two soon left the town following the path for about two miles, before Naruto stopped and sat on the ground. Mira watched him sit still for a few minutes, the familiar sense that she had felt when he fought Master Makarov returned, and it felt as if Naruto was becoming one with the earth. When he reopened his eyes they had become golden rectangles and there was something that looked like red makeup around his eyes. I can sense them, just half a mile away, there is over 40 actually and 10 of them seem to be mages, so we are going to be in the battle of our lives, Naruto said to the girl who had her eyes wide opened in shock. How strong are they or can you not tell? She asked him. Six of them seem to be around average, but the other four are at least S-class level, the blonde responded, this isn't a regular low rank mission, this is ought to be an S-class mission. Then why would the mayor lie about the mission? Mira asked. I don't know but this is starting to remind me of the first mission I took back in the land of waves, Naruto muttered making Mira wonder where this land of waves was at. Then maybe I can be of some assistant, said a male's voice from behind making Mira jump and turned around rapidly. Naruto didn't show any sign of being surprised as he had felt the man approaching them for a while now. Your Mira said. Back at the guild, back in fairy tale, Makarov had finally gotten up after the beating his pink-haired friend Puryusuka had given him for being an irresponsible master. It had happened after he had given Naruto and his daughter their guild stamps that the woman had arrived since she had heard the explosions of their fighting, along with sensing the magic that was released during the fight. Hell he didn't have the chance to throw the welcoming party for the two, but that could wait until both Natsu and Urza came back from their missions. Although he did wondered how the two would react once they found out that the newcomer had fought him to a draw. Makarov knew that Natsu would challenge the blonde to a fight immediately, and he wasn't sure what Urza would do just yet. His train of thought was broken when he arrived at the guild and saw that everyone was having a good time. However he was looking for someone in specific, but he was nowhere to be found, he did see the small blue-haired girl who was talking to Levy, along with the rest of her team's shadow gear. Wendy, the old man called as he walked over to her. Wendy's attention was drawn away from her chat with Shadow Gear to the short old man. Yes. Responded the little girl. I was wondering where your father has gone, Makarov said. Dusan left with Marahin on a mission, Wendy informed him. I see, well then I guess we'll talk about his rank and if he will form a team once he gets back from the mission, Makarov said as he nodded his head, out of curiosity which mission did he take. It was the one in Onibus town, something about bandits terrorizing the area, it was Macau who had overheard the conversation respond. What? The master said. Is something wrong master? Asked Levy slightly worried at the old man's reaction. I was looking into that request prior his arrival, apparently some dark mages have been seen in the area, Makarov said. I know Naruto is strong as he didn't go all out in our fight, and Mira is strong in her own right as well, but even those two will have a hard time in fighting against ten dark mages, damn it where's Urza when you need her or even Laxus. 
Tu San will be fine, Wendy said drawing attention, Tu San has another skill that he didn't show during the fight, so if the fight gets tough, he will use it to keep Mira safe. Are you sure? The worried master asked. Yep, she responded. I hope you're right. Back with Naruto and Marahin. Your, Mistigan, Marahin said with wide eyes at the side of Fairy Tail's most mysterious member. The man, who only Master and possibly Laxus, had ever seen within the guild when he came to turn in his mission report and get new missions. He never showed his face as it was covered with a handkerchief and had those full body clothes and magic staffs on his back. She couldn't believe that he was standing right in front of her without putting her to sleep. I was wondering when you were going to show yourself, Naruto said, Mistigan, eh, I take it that's the name you go by these days then. It has been a while hasn't Naruto, and yes that is the name I go by for a reason that I will share with you in private, the mysterious man responded, it's a pleasure meeting you Marahin. Mira kept quiet as she didn't know how to respond, the man everyone wanted to know about was in front of her and was casually talking with Naruto. That was another thing that surprised her, these two seemed to be old acquaintances. How did you we were in this direction Misto? Asked Naruto. Well I was in the vicinity doing a routine check when I overheard a few people talking about how a team from Fairy Tail had arrived to take care of some bandits in the area, Jell said. I was about to leave and not bother with listening, but then I heard a few people talking about a hot white haired, though what drew my attention was the girls talking about a blonde haired, blue eyed man with whiskers on his face. And I am the only who fits that criteria, the blonde said with a small laugh. Yes, something else that confused me was that no one said anything about a little girl with a blonde, so I came to see why, the man continued, and to my surprise I find you alone with a woman, so I take it you're finally trying to make Wendy Chan's wish for a mother come true. Naruto blushed slightly at his friend's remark, while Marahin turned around to cover the atomic blush that had sprouted on her face. Shut up, Naruto said, so are you going to help? I said I would, Jell said. Okay then come on, the blonde said walking away he could still hear Jell chuckling at him. Marahin walked behind him a blush still visible on her face. Mistigan followed behind chuckling something that was usually out of his character. Later the three were standing in the woods near the camp, Naruto was still in his sage mode, and they could get a good look at the group. The bandits were all eating and drinking, further away there was a large tent pitched up that seemed to be where the mages were in. Naruto turned to his new team, Jell understood the gesture and pulled off one of his staffs to use his sleep magic. Mira watched the man wave his staff to release a strange purple powder into the air. The bandits who were all taken by surprise dropped the things that they were holding before falling to the ground themselves fast asleep. There they're all asleep now so they won't be a bother for when we begin our fight with the mages, Jell said placing the staff back on his back. It won't be long now till they find out that we are here, so Marah and I want you to take on three of them, same goes for you Mistigan, Naruto said, I will fight the last four. Now get ready because here they come. Just as Naruto said that the tent opened up and out walked two people, a man and a woman, the two glared at the sleeping bandits. They saw the woman go back into the tent for about a minute and came back out with some of the missing mages. In total there were six males and three females. What the hell happened here? They heard one of them asked. They were put to sleep by magic, one of the women responded. Yes, and it would seem that the pest need to quit hiding in the trees, a man who seemed to be the leader said. On cue Naruto and his team left their hiding spot and walked out in front of the ten mages. Well, who would have thought that they would be the ones responsible for this, the leader said as he studied them. Seems like the old bastard in Onibus has been holding back on the money, if he was able to hire these three, a woman said next to the leader, the demon Marahin of Fairy Tail, along with the mysterious Mistigan. Yes, but they are of little consequence, a big burly man said on the other side of the female, the big one in them would be the blonde Naruto Uzumaki. Ah yes, the man wanted by many guilds, both legal and dark, another voice came from behind the enemy lines. Out of the shadows stepped the missing mage, a tall man with red hair and black eyes, a scar going down his left eye. Wait I know that man, Mistigan said, Krim, the silver mage. I see someone's heard of little old me, the man now identified as Krim said with a large grin. I've also heard of him, he was banished from a guild for destroying and killing members of a rival guild, if I remember correctly I think it was Titan Nose, Marahin said, he along with 15 others were kicked out. I see, Naruto said knowing that he was bound to be strong, I will fight him. You take on the other two, I want to fight against the blonde, Krim stated. Naruto, Jell called. I know, don't worry I can handle him, the blonde told him, once I'm finished, I'll come and help you out. Naruto separated himself from the group as Krim did the same and moved away from where the fight was about to begin. The man glanced at him for a second before bursting forward at high speed while pulling out an Ajinata from a pocket dimension. The blonde remained calm as the man thrust the weapon towards his neck. Krim smirked as he saw the blade reach the blonde's neck, though just as it was about to hit Naruto disappeared in a burst of wind. Next thing the red-haired mage felt was a tremendous amount of pain erupting from his stomach. 
Krim fell to the ground coughing up blood as he looked up to see Naruto calmly in the same position as they had begun. The renegade mage knew that he had underestimated the blonde, he had heard rumors about him that he was strong and fast, but what he did was just crazy. He stood back up ignoring the pain, and a silver spell circle appeared under his feet. Naruto's eyes widened when he saw some strange silver substance cover the man's body from head to toe, and even the clothes he wore. Now you going to see why they call me the silver mage, Krim said with a large smirk. The now silver man shot forward even faster than before this time his weapon was forgotten as he slammed his fist into Naruto's chest, sending him into a tree. Marahin who was disposing of another mage saw this and became alarmed, though the way Mistigan looked away made her frown. Fairy Tales mages are family and they help each other, she was about to help when she saw Naruto standing back up, as if nothing had happened in the first place. That was some punch, Naruto said, and it seems that, that armor really raises your defense, as well as your speed and strength. Damn right, why do you think I was the former ace of Titan's nose, the man sneered. I guess we should finish this fight here and now, said Naruto as he stretched out his hand, and in a flash of light a sword appeared. What the hell do you think a puny little sword and going to do against this body made of pure steel? Asked a dark mage with a laugh. More than you think, was the answer as the blonde flashed forward and slashed horizontally, making a deep gash in the man's body. Impossible, were Krim's final words before he fell down. Kusanagi, nothing can block it unless it is adamantine, Naruto said as he turned to see his team finishing of the rest of the fallen mage's partners. And all this had turned out for the better, hell he even wondered why he had been worried in the first place, he could have taken all them out with his shadow clones. It seems that we are done here, Mistigan said placing his staff where it belonged. Yeah, though I expected more action, but it was still a little fun, Naruto said, come let's take them back to the town, so the local authorities can take care of the bandits, and the rune knights can be summoned. The three then began to round up the fallen criminals and place them in a large group in the center. Next they left the area heading back to Onibus. Naruto stayed behind for a moment and pulled out a kunai that he threw into the trees and then followed the others. A few days later, after Mistigan and Naruto with Marahin each left on their own paths, the two could be seen walking towards the guild. The bounty for the dark mages had been quite large that they didn't even ask the mayor of Onibus to pay for an S-class request. Now the two could see the guild up ahead, and Naruto was looking forward to see how Wendy had been during his absence. When they got to the door they felt something was off, the inside was far too quiet, except for a voice that Naruto didn't recognize. He pushed the door open and saw something that made his blood boil. Wendy was sitting at a table with Cheryl floating in front of her with her arms stretched out. And the reason for his boiling blood was the fact that some pink-haired brat was basically yelling at her. Marahin face palmed, why Natsu would be acting like that towards the little blue-haired girl. She could see Levi trying to tell Natsu to leave her alone. Naruto took a step towards them and pointed his hand at the pink head. The woman next to him wondered what he was doing and nearly jumped out of her skin, a thick golden chain shot out of his palm. Natsu was ecstatic, for the first time he had met someone who was like him, another dragon slayer. Finally maybe he could get some clues as to the whereabouts of his father Igneal, all he had to do was get the girl to tell him what she knew. Meanwhile his companion Happy was drooling at the sight of the white cat that was acting protectively towards her partner. Just as Natsu was about to ask another question he felt something wrap around his waist. Looking down he saw that it a golden chain of some sort. Next he felt being lifted into the air, his eyes followed the chain and saw a strange blonde-haired boy standing by the door with Marahin, the chain coming out of his palm. Before he could say anything he began falling at a high speed, making him scream out loud just as he crashed into a table. The others watched in shock that the new guy would just attack Natsu for no reason until they remembered that the pink-haired mage had been bothering the man's daughter. Naruto walked towards Wendy who now had a smile on her face at the sight of her father, many of his new allies just moved away. The chain was still attached to Naruto's palm. Otu-san, Wendy called as she ran up to hug him. It was at this moment that he heard the loud footsteps coming from the stairs. In moments out of the stairway came a red-head girl around his age, she had brown eyes and wore armor with Hart Crew's smith symbol, a blue skirt, and black boots. Instantly an image of his mother appeared next to her. The scarlet-haired girl stared a moment at Naruto, before her eyes landed on the golden chain which in turn was tied around the down Natsu's waist. She then turned her attention to Naruto again and glared. The blonde on the other hand was thinking how pretty the girl was and as to why she was glaring at him. Who are you? She asked as a sword appeared in her right hand. Naruto raised an eyebrow in surprise to meet someone else who used requip magic like his. Ah, you're back Naruto, came the voice of Makara from behind the girl, Urza put your weapon away. But master he attacked Natsu, the girl known as Urza said. Makarov hummed as he glanced at the down Natsu tied by a golden chain that was coming from his newest mage hand, Naruto would you mind releasing Natsu? Sorry master, I saw him picking on Wendy Chan and I just overreacted, Naruto apologized. It's fine, but please don't do it again, master told him. 
Asked her who is this man? Asked her is still glaring at the blonde. Oh right you weren't here when he arrived, the old man, this is. However before the old man could say anything someone took that opportunity to interrupt him. Team. Shouted Natsu as he jumped to his feet and like Urza glared at Naruto, why the hell did you attack me? You were picking on Wendy Chan, Naruto responded. I was just trying to get her to tell me about Igmiel. The pink head shouted. I'm afraid that Wendy would not be able to tell you anything as her mother is a dragon by the name of Grandini, Naruto said. That aside, Natsu, Urza, Makarov called, I would like you to meet Naruto Uzumaki and his daughter Wendy Marvel Uzumaki, Fairy Tale's newest members. A pleasure meeting the both of you Natsu-san, Urza-chan, Naruto greeted then bit his tongue at the sudden slip up in the redhead's name. Said redhead blushed slightly at being called Chan as not many people would call her that, she would be lying if she said that she didn't find the blonde hot, only she wouldn't say it out loud. Likewise, Naruto-san, Urza said. Fight me. Said Natsu drawing the attention of many in the guild. Natsu, are you out of your fucking mind, called out his number one rival Grey Fullbuster, who was wearing only a pair of boxers. What do you mean Grey? He asked. Naruto here fought Master prior to joining the guild, and the fight ended in a draw, so that means he's at least as strong as Master, Grey called back. Urza I sized up the blonde who had fought her master to a draw, at first he didn't look much stronger than Grey maybe. That's his not all, Mira said, on our mission we came upon Krim, the silver mage, who Naruto fought and took him out with a single blow from his sword cutting through his steel skin. What? Almost everyone screamed. They had all heard of the man said to turn his skin to be nearly impenetrable, and for a sword to be able to cut through that was just crazy. I challenge you to a fight, Urza said she was curious as to what the sword was like, since she knew that it had to be powerful to cut through pure steel. No way, I want him first, Natsu said with a large grin on his face. No to the both of you, Naruto said turning his back on them. Then I guess the battle against Master was a fluke, along with the defeat of Krim, Urza said, he comment, made the blonde stop and turn around to look at her. Fine I accept you challenge, but let's put a stipulation, Naruto said. What kind? Urza asked. Um, I don't know, the blonde responded. How about, I win you have to clean all of my 100 armors for a week, Urza said with a smirk, making people pale as they knew how hard it was to clean those things. Okay, but if I win, Naruto began, you have to go on a date with me. Everyone's eyes bugged out even Makarov's, this guy had balls of steel to ask Urza the strongest woman in all of fairy tale out. Mira was glaring at Urza, and for once she was hoping for her to win, that way she wouldn't get in her way of getting his attention. Urza blushed harder than ever, this guy had just basically asked her out. Very well let's go out back. Naruto followed her out to the back of the building, along with the rest of the guild even Laxus who was on the second floor, was interested in seeing him fight again. Play Guilty Crown Ost Bios by Mika Kobayashi do not own, both were staring at each other, waiting for the signal to begin which came from Makarov. Then Rin no Yoroi, the woman called out as her body began to glow, the light died down showing Urza in one of her numerous armors. The breastplate of the armor is small compass to feather-shaped plates pointing upwards, which cover only Urza's breasts, revealing a fair amount of her cleavage, and sporting a large metal flower on the front, extending down along her hips, exposing her belly and navel as well, and reaching up to her pauldrons, again compass to feather-shaped plates pointing upwards. Her biceps are covered by straps seemingly made of metal, and her very large plated gauntlets sport feather-shaped plates at the edges. Around her waist she has a series of extremely large decorated plate circling it completely, still reminiscent of feathers, which is sported over a very long and flimsy skirt with decorated edges, under which her large plated boots are partially hidden, each sporting two small, metal ornaments shaped like wings. Urza also wears a neck guard made of feather-like plates around her neck, more reminiscent of a necklace, and, true to her nickname, a tiara with prominent jutting metal wings extending upwards above her head. The most visible trait of the armor, however, are the two pairs of large metal wings which adorn Urza's back when she dons it, compassed of metal feathers which get longer and larger as they approach the edges. In her hands was pair of swords each sporting a gem on its hand guard, which is shaped like a pair of wings. Wow, that quite the provocative attire you're wearing, Naruto said as he stretched his hand out and instantly Kusanagi appeared. Urza was surprised that he could also use requip magic. That little sword will be useless against mine, Urza said confidently. Don't judge a sword by a cover, Naruto said. Denrin. S. Kurin Smdo, called Urza as copies of the swords in her hands began to circle around her as she floated in the air. The swords then shot towards Naruto who tightened the grip on his sword and waited for the right moment to strike. Just as the swords closed in he raised his sword and spun around on his toes. The effects were instantaneous the swords that Urza had launched fell to the ground cut in pieces, as if a hot knife cut through butter. What? Urza exclaimed at the sight of her swords. Naruto said nothing as he pointed his empty hand in the airborne girl directions, his eyes were no longer blue they were purple with rings in them. Ashotenin, Naruto said. 
Urza felt a strange pull on her body as she went flying forwards. Naruto had thrown his sword into the air as a strange blue orb began to form in his palm. Urza had no way of dodging and ended up taking the full power of the attack, which of course sent her flying back. Just as she was about to land on the ground she felt something wrap around her torso, it was the same golden chain that the blonde used against Natsu. Naruto pulled the chain back sending Urza into the air once again, only to be brought back down this time she crashed hard into the ground. Just as she was trying to get back up, Urza felt the cold tip on a blade on her neck. I win, Naruto said. And bios, it seems so, Urza managed to say though her abdomen was in big pain. Wendy, heal her, Naruto said as he walked away, I'll pick you up at 7 tonight for our date in front of the guild and wear something nice. Okay, Urza said as she felt the pain beginning to fade. Okay so not as long as I wanted but I got this out, I know it's not what many of you were expecting, but guess what I decided to make another chapter where I will show Naruto's and Urza's date and more about Naruto's travels will be revealed. Well review and I will try to update as fast as possible, but since I am a college student, homework keeps me rather busy along with work now that I work double shift for the time being. Well I will try to bring up my next chapter for my others fix ASAP. Before I forget big news, me and Challenger have been working on a left behind series story. Now this is not a crossover, but it is an awesome idea, it's going to be a dark Naruto fic, so be on the lookout for it, it's going to be called Naruto. The Child of Destruction. What if Kami sends Naruto to Fairy Tail, and thanks for watching my video till the end. If you enjoy this content, then do consider subscribing to my channel, and leave a like if you guys need the next part comment down, and thanks for watching the video and see you guys next video.